Guys, YMH is back. This is YMH Live 8, and the tickets are on sale right now. We have not been doing these for a while, so we had to come back bigger and better than ever, and we have. We have musical guest Danny Brown, special guest Tim Dylan, we created original content just for this episode, spent major dough shooting major productions just to make this the most special one yet. Plus, of course, there's a crazy heavy segment and a lot more, and there's a VIP pre-show hosted by our very own Josh Potter. If you can't watch live, don't worry. You can watch the show for over a week after it airs live. So get your ticket now and it'll take care of you for the whole next week plus. Livestream.ymhstudios.com. Get your tickets right now and enjoy the show. Like I wish I could be a parent and be fully rested. You know what I mean? Not. Oh, you want it to be a dad. (laughs) (laughs) oh that's what oh you want it yeah well welcome welcome to your mom's house this episode of your mom's house is brought to you by sattva you guys know we're huge huge fans of sattva and their amazing mattresses we've been sleeping on them for over a decade now 10 years on different Sattva mattresses. Um, It is a game changer, and you deserve to sleep on a high-quality mattress that doesn't break the bank. You spend, I don't know, a third of your life or something on a mattress asleep, and people will spend money on all kinds of things they don't need, but forget that you should invest in a great mattress. Get great sleep. It's a great product, environmentally friendly product, Uh, They have luxury firm mattresses. They have memory foam mattresses. They have mattresses that will sit up for you when you're too lazy to do it, like me. They're all amazing. And Sattva offers us a great deal for you. You go to Sattva, S-A-A-T-V-A dot com slash the shit, and you'll get $200 off any mattress of your choice. Diamonds in the crevice. D to the A to the A to the M of your Diamonds in the crevice of your pussy. Diamonds in the crevice of your pussy. Keep going. Let's glass. Let's glass. I'm glass and I'm like, holy smokes. Pussy. 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 Right. That was cool. I haven't I haven't thought about that song in a really long a really time. long time. And he used to have that silly ring on his finger. Yeah, it was like a fingertip, uh, like a claw. Yeah, which is not good to have in your pussy. And he was like diamond. Yeah. Your pussy. Your pussy. Who, who was it again? He was well known. Right? Orlando Brown. I wow. Think. Look at the, that uh, memory. Like Disney Channel guy. Oh, okay. What? That's him. Yeah. Wow. Right? Is that him? Yeah. Yeah, that's him. Dang. It is? Uh-huh. He yeah. was on the Disney Channel? Yeah, you, it kind of messed him up, I think. Kind of. <laughs> a little bit, you know? Yeah, it's a little off-brand to yeah, do he's diamonds kinda, in your pussy. Oh, yeah. he's doing all right. Shit. Yeah, he was talking that, she was talking that talk in that video. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, pretty Good cool. Good memories. Yeah. You know, it's funny, um, our friend Ali Wong was just nominated for an Emmy yes. for her comedy writing and her special. And I was thinking to myself, why why aren't I Emmy nominated? Mm-hmm. And it's probably because we open our show with diamonds in the crevice of your pussy. Oh. 
my whole career is like fart, pussy, dick. Yeah. I non-binaries are silly. Like, yeah, it's, I'm making choices. You're making choices. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? What? I'm pretty happy with those choices. Good choices. It's who I am. Yeah. It's who I am. And uh, you never know. There might be an Emmy around the corner. <laughs> I doubt it. You never know. I say stupid things too much. I am, I'm stupid. That's my problem. This is your inner dialogue? Yeah. I'm stupid? Well, no, just that I'm not wise with yeah. my, um, like, you're, you're very good about controlling what comes out of your mouth. I, I just don't know. I don't have a filter. It's the problem of mine, I don't think. Uh, like, you guys, little people don't know this, but sometimes I say things on the show, and then Najav and the booth, everybody goes, yeah, you don't want, you want to edit that out. And, like. I mean, I feel like that happens in life. Like, a lot of times I'll be like, hey, you can't, you need to go back and say something to that person. Me or you? I say that to you. I need to go back and correct whatever yeah. impression I've left. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. I, I'm like stupid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Women are fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I just don't have tact, I think, is, uh, is my flaw. I, I'm just not, I'm not very good with societal yeah. But you know what? Hey, good thing I found comedy. Where Comedy's I get, good. I get rewarded for being a, a dope. Not everybody um, has the same skill set or approach to life also. Everybody approaches life differently. Yeah. Like with how they navigate, you know, socializing. For instance. What's your first and last name? I don't have a last name. You don't have a last name? No. <laughs> what's your first name? I don't have a first name either. I've got a name. My name is Robert. You can call me Robert. Oh, I'm not a person. See, you you deal here with Admiralty Maritime Jurisdiction, which deals with persons, which I am not. Oh. What are you? Are you human? I'm a man. You're human? I'm a man, yes. Are you a U.S. citizen? No. You're not a U.S. citizen? I was not born in Washington, D.C., or any territory of the federal... Under federal jurisdiction, so no, I'm not a U.S. citizen. Were you born in the United States of America? In any of the states? I was born in America. Yes, I'm a state citizen okay. of one of the several states. Uh. <laughs> oh, it's Randy. Makes sense. Don't bring anyone mother. He's different. <laughs> different. Speaks to people differently. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh. welcome to your mom's house. Meow, meow, meow. With Tom meow, Sipura, meow. Tom Sipura. Christina Pajitsi. Welcome to your mom's house. Meow, 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 Play the guitar. I haven't seen you play in a while. Oh! That was cool. I felt it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So pretty cool guy. Yeah. Um, I don't have a first name. I don't have a last name. He's a man. He's not a person. Man. I was not born in the United States. Okay. I was born in America in one of the states, though. Okay, so but not part of the federally united states. Yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, it's just like... It's a lot of logic. It's cool vibes. It's mm -hmm. like it's a way to be like, oh, I'm here to kind of go with the flow, <laughs> you know? <laughs> One of these guys is doing their own thing. <laughs> I'm not here to cause any, any problems. No, he's just doing his thing and stuff like that. There's more than seven. One of the several. Which state? Idaho. Can I see your Idaho state license? No, I don't have one. You don't have one? My person does, but I don't. And I don't wish to create joinder with you. All right. God, it's so annoying. Just like being an asshole, you know? Yeah, like you know the definitions, retard. Stop yeah, being, and you also stop being this guy. You know that like this is actually the guy he's dealing with is actually has a really agreeable attitude. Mm -hmm. the guy's just doing his job and you're just being like, nope. Not a human. No, I mean, you're just being a dick. Just you know? being a jerk face. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's, you've probably been in situations where you go into, you know, whatever, the DMV or you're at an airport. You, every once in a while you see this kind of interaction. You see someone, you're like, the fuck is this person doing? 
and they're just being a dick. You know? Yeah, they're taking it out on the wrong guy. Because yeah. this guy is super nice. He didn't ask for this yeah. shit. You think he wants now, to this deal is, with you? This is a higher level of... He's in the courtroom. Right. But he's I'm saying this is a higher court. level of disagree. It's not like... He's not like, you know, no, um, I'm, I, I'm here because I'm, uh, I'm out. I had something to do this morning. Like that kind of thing where someone's like, you're like oh, this person's like agitated. Mm-hmm, right. This mm-hmm. he's he's giving actual nonsensical answers. <laughs> well, he's know? he's attacking the very foundation of the interaction, like yeah. first name and last name. Like he's yeah. being a dick right off the bat. Yeah. Like not even. Then he said, I don't have the ID, but like my person does. Oh, so now he's distinguishing like, between a person and he's a man. And then. Yeah. This guy's got all kinds of beefs with the world. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm going to go in and speak with the prosecutor. Oh, no, you're not. Excuse me. Excuse me. You're blocking my freedom of movement. I am. All right. Well, P. Barnes, you just admitted to me that you're violating my rights. Oh my no, I'm God. not. You can't come in with the camera. Well, you're violating my rights. And this is also Put freedom of the press. Out from behind you. This is also freedom of the press. I mean, I don't know what the hell law book you're reading, man, but it doesn't apply to me. You leave the camera with your mother outside the courtroom and you can come in. <laughs> <laughs> with your mother it's uh, yeah. bold it's good yeah i mean well, he's like you're not gonna fucking punk me kid yeah That's what he's that like was. get the fuck out of here <laughs> get the fuck out of here um you know you don't want the law involved in your life yeah you know once once you start getting those those strikes against you getting arrested getting the law involved you think this is his first run in with the no, law yeah. but it's not a good thing to do he wants to go talk to the prosecutor so <laughs> oh shit you are not God. You have no oh. jurisdiction over me. God's not worried about cameras, sir. I am. All right. Well, why are you worried about cameras? Because you want to do something against wrong? Because you want to do something wrong? Because if, if it's against the rules, that means it's because somebody intends on wronging somebody else. Because oh they're afraid God. of being I held accountable. P. Barnes. <sighs> that was good, too. Mm-hmm. Nice speech. This guy's seen all kinds of yeah. shit in his life. He's like, dude. Listen wanna, to me. I did two tours in Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now I'm doing this shit. Now I got to listen to your dumbass. Give me a speech about God and cameras. It's I wonder like, if this will escalate or not. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't have to go in because okay. you can't even issue a warrant for me. You might as well leave. Well, no, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to speak with the you prosecutor. You go in there without the camera. Well, please step aside. I'm going in. No, you're not going in. <gasps> don't touch me. You're not oh going in, sir. Let the record show that you just battered me. <gasps> and you're using... Oh! Oh! That's what's up. Oh, stop, please. I'm not doing anything wrong. Hey, you know what? You guys are really overstepping your bounds right now. <laughs> Put the cuffs on. What are you arresting me for? I mean, that seems right. That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen a stun gun in a while. I thought we stopped using great. those in the 90s. Taser. Right? The taser? Yeah, yeah. Didn't the taser go out of style with the uh, LAPD? We still use Sometimes them? they forget which one to pull out, but yeah. it's still around. Yeah, it's still yeah. around. Yeah. What a great tool the taser is. It's fantastic. For these psychos, yeah. you don't want to shoot the guy. You don't want to touch the guy. Yeah. But tasing the guy? Perfect yeah. solution. I mean, if he's white, tase him. <laughs> talk to him afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Be like, you were white. misbehaving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, because I remember stories of LAPD tasing people on PCP, but they were like superhuman strength, so that yeah. taser wouldn't have any effect. That was pretty fun. Yeah, it has zero, zero effect on people who are <laughs> dusted up. Dusted up? <laughs> yeah, they really doesn't. Oh, my God. They'll tase, they'll have like 10 cops on them, and the guys will be like, ah! <laughs> Can you imagine what it feels like to be tased? It's I mean, gotta be terrible. It's got, oh, yeah, I've... I mean, everybody, that, that is true that if you are <gasps> law oh enforcement, you get taste, so you do get it. To feel what it's like. Yeah, you yeah. get it. And they, I've talked to people, they're like, it's so fucking terrible. <laughs> but It's gotta be. But also it makes you think, <gasps> what does it feel like to be on, like, to be uh, just, you know, dusted up on a bunch of PCP? <laughs> like, how, how does it feel for, like, eight men <laughs> try to hold you down? You're like, no! And they're like, like, what's going on inside of you? It's probably pretty cool, actually. It's got to be the best. Yeah. <laughs> You're superhuman. Yeah. You're a superhuman. Yeah. yeah. I mean, shit, like I've been ele- like shocked. Like, you know, you accidentally you touch something. It's, oh, oh. Like, can yeah. you imagine oh, that right. current running through your entire... <laughs> yeah. 
And then you know what happens with a lot of people that get tased, right? Is they get hurt on the fall. Well, sure. Because I that bet. tase, yeah. you know, it's, locks you up and then you just <laughs> fall and like hit your head on the cabinet. All your teeth gone. And you're like, well, we tased him, but, you know, he died because his head hit the wall. <laughs> like, I'm sure. And I'm sure the police pay for that damage. Right? Yeah. They're like, we're very, very sorry about it. Very, very sorry. I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but did you know when somebody gets murdered in your house or something? Yeah, like a murder happens and it's on your property that you have to pay to clean it up. Like you have I've to heard f- this. You have to find a human waste service I've heard to about come this. and sterilely clean your murder scene. Could you imagine that amount of sucky yeah. trauma like I dude know. someone just got murdered in my house and i have like to the, fucking clean it like you know the cops will come and investigate the coroner will take the body and they'll be like this bloodbath is yours yeah and yeah. they're like see you later yeah there's no service they don't they don't help you clean i know that. somebody that can get brains out of walls i'll give you a <laughs> and it's on you to pay for it like i mean not, i don't know what i assume that is there some kind of fund also for victims you let's know? say this you know murders happen in every socioeconomic yeah level but there's probably, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing here, more of them in the lower socioeconomic, you know, level. And so you're talking about somebody who, if something like horrific like that happens in their home, probably doesn't have the disposable income. Right. So, you know what I mean? Like if, you, yeah. if you're in a trailer or like a, yeah. a, a, you know, I don't know, like a small home and they're like, you know, a horrible crime happened here. And then they're like, yeah, it's going to be uh, $6,800 to kind of, yeah. you know, and they're like, ah. Because it's what? a special service. It's like they have to clean up human waste. This is not yeah. just like and that, the steam Stanley steam cleaner. Like, you know, this is a fucking thing. That blood, uh, it went <laughs> through the carpet, yeah. through the floorboards, yes. and it's dripping into your basement. And they're like, how do I? And they're like, it's just this, another $4,000. I'm like, what? Yeah. 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 You know how expensive that shit is. Just getting your carpet steamed is a fortune. When yeah. our kids mess up our carpets or... The walls. Hey, just getting to get it into paint over some marker is a fortune. I can't sell out who it is, but I uh, I was on a charter flight on on tour, and they told me about a celebrity that was like, uh, "Hey, I want to smoke on this plane, <laughs> right?" It's a, it's a private charter plane, and they're like, "Ah, you can't." He's like, "No, no, no, call the uh, <laughs> call the operators." You know, how much is this? So there you go. The guy goes, uh, hey, I want to smoke on this flight. And they're like, he's like, how much is it going to cost me? And they're like, uh, like $10,000. And he's like, fuck that. I'm not paying that. And then they go, all right, well, $5,000. And he goes, see, I knew you were fucking whores. And then they agreed to 5000 and he smoked on the flight. Yeah. So what's, because what's the damage? It's well, they have to do like a deep, a they have to do a deep cleaning though. Right, because yeah. if, if you're smoking on something, it's gonna like a tube, like a plane is. Yeah, and then, that is so funny. And then I heard another story on a flight where another celebrity, I guess, was tipped off by a flight attendant or something that you could go and if you went in the bathroom and you pushed a valve, you could smoke and blow the smoke. It would be sucked into like oh the you know like a luggage compartment or something. So, oh so that God. person did that. Yeah. And that worked? That worked. They didn't get... On no. a private plane, they did this? Or on a commercial? On a private plane, they did Oh, it. my God. Yeah. Is it really that important? Well, we've heard stories of celebrities who will go to hotels and be like, uh, I don't care if I have to... Like, what's the penalty? And they'll just do it. Yeah. And, not, and pay three grand or whatever it is. Like, you really have to smoke indoors that you, much? I mean, it's like, Psycho. it's got to be a real compulsion at that point if you're like... Yeah. Yeah. You do that too? Shut the fuck Dude, up. Dude, smoking indoors is the best, man. But do you, I mean, you, you would do that in a hotel You'd and pay like, like three grand. Uh, no, I've never done that in a hotel, but like in LA, when I was getting ready to move here, those yeah. last two weeks <laughs> in my apartment, I did some good damage. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's pretty rad. So you just were like, fuck it. I'm leaving. Yeah. I was like, whatever, dude. Like, I don't need to fucking wallow in this filth. That's the next tenant's yeah. job. <laughs> so good. Smoking indoors. Dude, it's it really is the best though. That's yeah, all, I have makes a, Vegas so cool. I have a friend. Yeah, that's true. I have a friend that make, has a, a cigar yeah. lounge that he owns, and that is nice to sit around, have a cigar. You know. Yeah, it's the ultimate. It's one of the privileges of being an adult, Tom. It really is that you can smoke in your apartment. I used to do it too when I was like twenty three. Yeah. I graduated, and I was like, "This is why I don't live at home. 
I can just sit here and smoke. Yeah, like it's just like the gays, you know? Shit. It's just, just like the gays. Yeah. It's just like the gays. As long as you're it's two consenting adults, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. I used to like smoking in my car, but uh, not on hot days. That was the fucking worst, bro. Like I remember uh, when I used to work at uh, in post production and yeah. I lived in uh, Valley Village and I worked it's in a Valley Village. Uh, <laughs> I worked in West Hollywood. Um, you know, I took Laurel Canyon over. Which for people yep. who don't live in LA, it's a big, you know, a cut through so it takes you from the valley into the city, right? And it's incredibly jammed during the you know, rush hour, right? Going into the city in the morning and coming back to the valley in the evening. So I was taking that every day. It was just I lived right off of Laurel Canyon. It was the way I was gonna go to work. And uh, I worked in this post production place that had, you know, a hundred employees. And then one of them goes, oh, hey, uh, I saw you on Laurel. I see you there all the time, actually. I go, oh, yeah. They go, yeah, you know, you just uh, you sit there, you listen to the radio, and just watch you flick your cigarettes out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, huh? And they're like, yeah, I just see you. You just flick them out of the car. Oh, my and God. And it was their way of telling me, you know, you shouldn't do that. And I go, yeah, I'm not going to keep them in my car. <laughs> I go, That's well, here's the, the part that you're not – mentioning yeah. yet is that there's signs everywhere on laurel canyon like do not flick your uh, yeah. butts out because that's how for it like fires start yeah but that's for other people yeah that's not for me no i know you know well you're smarter because when i was 16 and smoking in my 87 chevy nova uh -huh. my first car i would keep them all in the ashtray Oof. and i remember like just and it was just overflowing and one time my dad took my car for some reason and he was like you gotta be kidding me. All these fucking cigarettes smells like shit in there. It smells like a fucking ashtray. Yeah. And at that point, like, they couldn't do nothing to me. I was like, whatever, dude. 16. How old were you? Like 16? Yeah. yeah. I, Sean and I would just smoke in the morning on the way to school, 6.30 in the morning. What would you be your, uh, when you parked, did you have like a routine to like get it off your breath or anything? Or? Yeah. Well, but I don't know why I was even trying because they knew I was smoking. Like I'd uh, punch out the, the screens in my room. I, my no, bedroom I'm was on about the second school. floor. Oh, they didn't give a fuck at school. No? They didn't give a fuck at school. I mean, Our I, school did. They smelled it on you? You get in trouble? Fuck yeah. Really? Absolutely. No, we were cooler than that. You guys were, I think your school is a little more uptight. Yeah, for sure. Because LA is like Catholic light school. Like everybody would, like teachers would smoke at this school. No, I had a teacher that smoked cool. fucking two packs of Pall Malls a day. But um, yeah. They they still did for the students. They didn't allow any anything like no that. shenanigans. No shenanigans. That's good. That's why your parents sent you there. Yeah. And look at the winner you fucking became because of those shenanigans. <laughs> I was one of the worst students they've ever had graduate <laughs> ever. I know. I heard you um, talking to Santino about your GPA two point one. Tom, it's pretty that is good. fucking what a D average, homie. Pretty bad. Yeah. That is like you just have to show up to get a two point one. It really. I got crushed by math and it really fucked everything up you know because i what, what happens is like if you do okay in that and then excel in a couple of things and average it kind of balances out you're going to be closer sure. to like you're going to be closer to a 3.0 probably mm -hmm. but i got crushed and then in other things if i didn't do great in it's adding to like the zeros you're getting in math I mean, it was just, it was really bad. I mean, bad. but bro, no one told you like, so you got to like, so. Cause Didn't I, care. I was a retard in math too. Yeah. And, but what I do is like, you stack the deck with easy shit. Like, oh, I'm too, I'm taking fucking ceramics I did. this semester. I'm taking tennis. It oh, you can me, take tennis? Yeah, I did. It took me going to college and, you know, right, like my first semester in college, I had like a 3.8 GPA, right? Wow. And they were like, they, uh, I mean, I remember one of the professors being like, you know, you're one of the best students I've ever, he pulled me aside to tell me that. Jeez. And then that, that was encouraging. So then I yeah. started to do things like, um, when I got a my first term paper assignment, I went to the library that day and started researching it for the, it was due in like three months. Mm. And I started to just become a better student. So my, I forget what my college GPA was. It was notably higher. Same as I um, was a retard in high school. I mean, it makes you feel bad in a way because I would go, you know, by junior year in college, I was like, oh, I've, I could have gone to a much better school. I know. And I could have, I could have. Uh, 
But you know what? I feel like it's such a bad time to put that much pressure on young people. You're 14 years old. Yeah. You're becoming, you're in puberty. You're just figuring out girls, your genitals, life. And you then also, at the same time, they're like, hey, don't forget, take your SAT. So this, this will set you up for the rest of your life. I also like, didn't know God how to damn. ask for help. Like, oh, yeah. a couple of people flagged it. You know, teachers were like, you're doing really poorly. And so yeah. they would, pull, but I... I didn't even really care. I remember going to like these after school sessions with this math teacher and he was like, you know, he was really nice. And he was like, you know, now do you get it? And I was like, mm-mm. mm-mm. But I also wasn't like, man, I'm trying to get it. Yeah. I was like, oh, I don't care. Well, because there's a, there's a, because I was stupid in math, like in algebra, forget it. Yeah. And I think it's because like if you miss out on the early fundamentals exactly of was. algebra and then you're like, dude, by the time I'm balancing equations and the equals and the, I don't know what the fuck this is. You know what I also remember? Oh, I hated it. I remember that at one point we were doing this thing where you we were going over something in algebra and he goes, well, you know, like he pulled up this long division equation on the oh board my God. and I go, Oh, I don't remember long division. And he was like, what? I go, I don't remember. I go, wasn't that like fifth grade or something? I go, I don't remember how it goes. And then I realized how connected it was like mm. that. I had that had dissolved. And then I was like, well, I don't, none of this makes sense to me anymore. You know, it so all we, builds. Yeah. It all builds on each other. And I had a fucking friend, like a good buddy of mine who was so advanced in math that they didn't offer a math course high enough oh, wow. at our high school. So a van from the community college would come and pick him up like during third period and take him to the community college so he could do an advanced calculus course and then it would bring him back. Yep. So he's taking college math. And I was like, dude, six plus four is 10. <laughs> I know. And he was like, yeah, I know. It's a retard. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm always amazed at kids that could excel in high school. I think there's just so much going on with you at that age. Yeah. It's it's too much. No, my high school was was happy to see me leave. I know, mine too. R- believe I was me. Like a, they're retarded. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my, my, my college, uh, whatever, what are they called? Guidance counselor? Yeah. Was like, well, there's Pierce College, which is a community college. Yeah. They're, they're, you can go to community college. I'm like, I'm not going to fucking community college. I'm going to go into like a private Jesuit school. I have to pay my way in. And I did. Yeah. And yeah. I got in on academic probation, but then I did better. Listen, I have a very big announcement to make. Oh, Is you do? Is it time? Um, Can we go and do this? Give me a moment. Sure. I need my chips in a bowl. I need cats eating kibble. All right. Oh, my gosh. Big announcement, you guys. Huge. So... As you know, my signature lip color is red. I've been yeah. wearing this since I was 13 years old. Yep. I am passionate about red lipstick. You are. I have tried every brand, every shade, you name it, I have done it. I am an expert in red lipstick and I get so many questions. What which one do you buy? Or what are you wearing? What are you wearing? What are you wearing? That I decided to contact Italy's premier Atelier is what it's called, Atelier Mm -hmm. Makeup Company. And we spent months developing this. And I have finally made my own shade of red lipstick. I'm calling it Christina P's Perfect Red Lipstick. And as far as I'm concerned, and this is like, I worked to create this formula. You did, you put a lot into this. It is the color I wear and the formula is perfect meaning like sometimes it's too soft and you'll get creases or it's too hard and it'll dry out your lips this is the most beautiful lipstick i think it's reasonably priced it is on the, our website um, ymh studios check it out try it out and you can finally look like your mommy here you so look great. i That's wanted great to give lipstick. it to the women of, of the world because you know a red lip really changes your life when you're feeling like a frumpy bag of shit. Mm-hmm. You put on a red lip and life is much better. So there you go. Good job. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I forgot how much I love that sound. Is there any better sound than a cat eating kibble? That's for you. That's for me. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm I super know you, stoked. You have... Um, Months went into this. I would say like from the uh, inception of the idea of it, it was a year or yes. more. You know, you've been talking about this for a long time. A long time. Because like, I, they, it's hard to find a brand that works anyway. I think this yeah. one will work for you. Also, may I plug my dates before we go on? As long as we're uh, on the sure. subject of plugging. I am in... Mm-hmm. 
Cleveland, Ohio at Hilarities, August 12th and 13th. Minneapolis, Tits, August 26th and 27th. One night only uh, in Judoic Titties at Brooklyn at the Bell House on September 7th. Detroit, September 9th. Finally, I've never done Detroit and I'm super stoked. One night in Chicago, September 10th. Zanies in Nashville, October 6th, 7th, and 8th. And then back again to Jew Dork Titties and Caroline's. And then Biloxi, um, November 18th. Tickets at ChristinaPOnline.com. Thank you. Boom. I will be, let's see, I'm going to keep touring the world. Um, and I'm going to be coming up here, let's see, August. My God, I know I have a, I have some days off in August, which is exciting, but I also have a bunch of shows. Um, let's see, August, make that bigger for me. All right. I have Niagara Falls, August 11th. I have Caesars, August 10th, which is uh, in Windsor, Ontario, Pittsburgh. Um, okay. That one's gone. Oh yeah. Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. I'm doing the great outdoors comedy festival, August 14th, uh, Penn state. I'll be at Bryce Jordan center, August 25th. Um, I'm doing the Wind Creek Event Center in Bethlehem, PA, August 26th. And let's see, Mohegan Sun Arena, September 3rd. And the Palace Theater in Stamford, Connecticut, September 4th. There's still a few tickets available, sorry, for my uh, fifth show, final show of Meridian Hall in Toronto in September. Okay. Um, so last night I went out to dinner uh, with uh, Bert Chrysler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we went to this really good spot. Uh, Bert, whatever. Um, what did he eat? <sighs> yeah, tell me, because he likes to order a lot. He showed up. He had, he, he, uh, we were meeting with um, some producers about a project we've been working on. Producers. Producers, directors, Direct choreographers. choreographers. You know what I'm saying? I write the music, you know what I'm saying? Um, and <laughs> he, uh, he shows up and he's like, I can just see it in his face. He's like, okay, I'm like, what? what is going on? He's like, had a couple cocktails on the way over here, right? Because he took, he, took, he took an Uber. He's like flushed and red. His belly, you know, is all distended. And he's like, we're going to tie one on, Tommy. And I was like, I drove here. I didn't Uber here. Because uh, he's like, oh, that's right. Tommy. And then he turns to the people. He goes, Tommy's always in control. He's always in control. And I'm like. Okay. Hey, wait, uh, wait. He's shaming you because you're showing up to a business meeting. Yeah, yeah, a business dinner. And I'm like, I'm not like, drunk. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. So we sit down. They they drop menus and, and Bert goes, we don't need those. One of everything. Oh, my One God. One of everything. No. Like that. And I was like, okay. So they just bring out like, six appetizers, right? The table is, is a oh, circular table. So it's, it's occupying every inch of it. And. <laughs> he's just ha so they're like one of the people goes uh tom what do you want to drink i go uh i think i want to do wine he go, they go yeah i'll do wine and bert was in the bathroom so he comes back he goes we're not doing drinks and i go well we ordered wine so he's like he goes he goes okay <laughs> so the <laughs> the waiter comes back <laughs> And they start opening the wine, and he goes, you know what? He goes, uh, I'd like a tequila, but, uh, you know, while I wait, uh, I'll take a glass of wine, too. I don't want to actually, you know. Oh, my God. So, it, you know, he's like that, pours the glass of wine, and then he goes, uh, what, what's the best thing? What's the best thing on the menu? And they're like, well, this and that. And Bert's like, I'll take one of those and one of those. I go, you're having uh, two entrees? And he's like, he's like. <laughs> <laughs> After 13 appetizers? So they bring out the main dish. And oh I'm not God. exaggerating. They put the he goes, put that second one in between us. Me and Tommy are going to share it. I go, I'm not uh. sharing that. So I take a bite of my dish. And as I look up, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> as I look up, I see him doing the last bite. Stop. And I go, I go, did you just finish that? He goes, it's so small. <laughs> oh, my God. So then he cuts into the second dish, right? And it's uh, it's chicken parmesan. It's like, jeez. <laughs> He's like, can you pass the salt? 
I mean, it's like a cartoon character, you know? And then he's putting this on. He goes, let me get another. He goes, another tequila. Like he screams it. It's a nice restaurant. <laughs> oh, my God. And then he's like, <laughs> and there's food falling on his <laughs> He's a mess. Yeah, he's a mess. You know, he's uh, all id. I asked for a grilled artichoke. I love grilled artichoke. Yeah. You know, you peel a leaf. Yeah, love that shit. Right? You peel so it good. and like you put it like between your teeth. Yeah. You, and you have like the end. So fun. So I'm like, you know, I offer this guy, and he's like, I'm good. And I go, Bert, artichoke. He goes, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he just takes it, takes a knife, cuts it in half, and goes <gasps> to the whole thing. <laughs> I was like, um. holy shit, <laughs> dude! How old is he now? He's like fifty. He yeah. turns fifty, yeah. I mean, he turns fifty. He's like, you start, you dress nice. <laughs> I want to start dressing nice. I go, you can. You look like a fucking sixth grader most of the time. Yeah. How I haven't seen him in person in a while. How how fat is Fat Sticks now? Uh, he's like he's pretty fat. Um, he's not his absolute fattest. Wow, really? No. It's Sounds like, a, like it's, he's working towards it, though. No. I mean, what it is is he's just riding that line all the time, you know, of like, <laughs> like, to, like last night he really went off the rails, but like today. He'll, he'll rein it in. Right? He might, he'll rein it in and he'll do a crazy workout. Like the kind of thing that 99% Gosh. of people, if they had last night's night with him, they'd be like, I'm in bed today, yeah. you know, or like, I'm not doing anything. I'm sick. Yeah. And he'll run and lift weights and you know he'll he'll be active today which isn't like it's not going to um make him lose weight but it'll keep it'll keep him from probably right. going over the top it'll keep him stable yeah what an interesting psychology he's so extreme he's such like a bingy he's a total binger person yeah like just hearing that out of controlness is like oh my god whoa like whoa yeah is that because that's not even pleasurable at that point like are you even are you even tasting no. stuff when you're just like oh, half another i don't think so i don't think Dang, so Dang, dude. and then he does this thing he always does this every time we hang out and there are drinks you know i think i'm like most people where i'm like all right you know the fun is it's you know i want to go home now yeah and he'll be like tommy tommy the night's just beginning buddy. no I'm like it is not. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's, <laughs> it's not. not. He was telling the story about, you know, pickleball? Mm -hmm. It's like it's a, the game has become more popular. He's like, you know, we'll do bus call because we both tour a lot. He's like, we'll do bus call. Sometimes it'll be like 4 a, a 4 a.m. bus call. So what we'll do is when the show's over, we'll just play pickleball till 4 a.m. and drink in the... And oh, then we get, and I'm my like, God. that's when I go, we tour so differently. How, but how is he sustaining that? I don't know. I don't know how he's not sick all the time. Well, like his, if you described, if I lived his lifestyle, I would be dead. Dead. Or, you know, routinely hospitalized. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know how he's alive. I don't know either. Is Mickey it, Mantle Gene. Yeah, it is. The, it truly is. Yeah. Because to, to blow it out that hard. Yeah. That is excessive. It, it must be in his DNA. Yeah, he's got it. He's definitely. He's a maniac. Yeah, he can just push through. I mean, this, the push through is the cra it's, it's it's crazy. It's just the craziest thing about him is what his next day is like. Like today, he probably got up at seven and was oh like, "Gonna go for a jog." And, <laughs> like, and you know what's so crazy? What's interesting because we've known him for so many years. It sounds like it's getting more extreme versus slowing down right. as he ages. Like he's doing more and then being more excessive. Yeah. So the pendulum is even farther both ways. Yeah. Which is just like, how is this happening? Yeah. Crazy talk. Crazy talk. Um, all right. Fuck. Let's take a quick break and we will be back in a moment. Hey guys, it's the hydration God here and the hot summer months are also here. We need to be proactive about keeping our bodies fueled and hydrated. Making hydration a priority can help us feel healthier in our everyday lives. And check this out. With one stick of liquid IV and 16 ounces of water, it hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. Plus, liquid IV products taste great with 10 refreshing flavors like Concord grape, lemon lime, pina colada, and tropical punch. Actually, sounds like summer. I take them on the road. It's the easiest thing. I grab the pouches, throw them in my backpack, 
wake up in the morning, tear it open, and you start your day feeling hydrated, feeling refreshed. Same thing right before bed. I love to do that in the evening as well. It gets you ready for the next day. Grab your liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code YMH at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code YMH at liquidiv.com. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. I believe in therapy. I've been in therapy for over a decade. It's completely changed my life for the better, and it's the one thing I've done for myself that has just improved every area of my life. Um, This is why I recommend BetterHelp, BetterHelp Online Therapy. How we take care of our minds affects how we experience life, so it's important to invest time and care into keeping them healthy. Um, BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat only therapy sessions. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. I mean, listen, if you haven't gotten, I don't know how people live without talking to a licensed professional. There's no shame in that game, man. Uh, it just makes your life better. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash mom's house. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash mom's house. Our guest is a brilliant, fantastic, hilarious, prolific writer, creator, and producer. His show Sprung comes out on Amazon Freebie beginning August 14th? 19th. Why the fuck would you put 14th in the copy then? My bad. Sorry about that. Oh, it's Zolo. Greg Garcia. Greg Garcia, everybody. Hey, what's going on? We're so stoked to have you. How you doing, man? I'm thrilled to be here. It's good to see you guys. You're the funniest person in the world. You really are. Don't say, why would you say that? Why would you say that right off the bat? Well, I would say non-Jewish. Okay. Like of all, like all there's right. there's a lot of really funny Jews. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. But in Hollywood, you know, we um, we were lucky enough to meet you. First of all, everybody. So people that don't know, uh, you created my name is Earl. Yeah, and that was a, a hit, huge show. So I think when you are out here and you're you know trying to make it and you see somebody's name as a show creator, you just go like, I'll never meet that person because I'm a piece of shit and that's a successful <laughs> person. Um, and so it's so crazy to even meet people that do like have done the things you've done. But then we got to work with you and you really are just like, it's, it reminds me of, um, I've done a few acting jobs and sometimes you're on set and you're with a real actor and they're like, and action. And you watch them. You're like, holy shit. Yeah. Like that is, they're like, that's different. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely, absolutely different what they're doing. Um, and I feel that way about you as like somebody who can like come up with ideas oh and come up with God. jokes. Well, like, we had, I look, we had a good time. And, we did. And, I, but I felt the same way because like I love stand up so much. Like stand up yeah. to me is like the top of the showbiz ladder to yes. me because I think writing is like super hard because you start with nothing. But then stand up, you got to write it, and then you got to perform it. Like I can write stuff and then just hide behind yeah, other but still, actors and stuff. But there's, listen, I mean, my first job, my very first thing I did when I got to LA, was I worked for Copelson Entertainment, which was a huge like movie production house, mm-hmm. and um, like big producers. They made you know, The Fugitive, Murder at sixteen hundred, um, uh, all all these like big thrillers, and I would do uh, script coverage, right. And, and basically, you would just sit there every day, read scripts, do a full synopsis, do an outline, explain what's good about it. So you just get so conditioned to that most writing is shit. Oh. Most writing is Garbage. shit. Garbage. And people give you stuff all the time to read. And yeah. they're just like, oh, oh this God. is perfect. And this is, what the worst is when they say, this is so you. This yeah, is yeah, so yeah. you. And you read it and you're like, what do you think of me? What, what do you yeah. think of <laughs> this? This is I? garbage. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've worked with. A- hey, man, I'm really good at dialogue. So I think you're going to like this. And you're like, what's, what about the story? Yeah, like, about a story. That's kind of important. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've worked with people before trying to develop shows. But with yes. you, it was like, you'd bring us these ideas. And Tom and I were like, holy shit, this guy's so fucking funny. And they would always be funny and thoughtful and really layered and, and deep and connected. Yeah, and, and you're also your good gift. at like why a story, what a story doesn't work, you know, like what it needs. And just so people understand, the like I think they should get the full story. Uh, we yeah, got because together. people are going to be like, well, yeah. people are also going to be like, I can't wait for this show to come well, out. Here, <laughs> sounds amazing. Here's the good news. Uh, we worked together. We got to the point where 
a whole group of people were real excited to do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> some mega huge names in our business and networks were like, we two wanna, networks were, were we going wanna, against each other. For we want to make this. We want, yeah. and we want to pay you guys more than most people make in a year. Sure. We want to, we want to give you that weekly. And, um, uh, we said no, and then it went away. Which I thought was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my yeah. life. I loved it. And because, you know, when they first called me, they were like, hey, do you want to meet with Tom and Christina about this idea? And I don't normally like do that stuff because I just like doing my own ideas. But I knew who you guys were. I was, I was a fan. And I was like, yeah, have them come over to the house and we'll have a meeting. And worst case scenario, we'll just become friends, which would be fine with me. I, yeah. I, I like them a lot. And so then we had a great meeting. My parents were visiting. Yep. Right. I introduced my mother as my wife. That oh my god! Best. This this is the kind of thing is what I'm talking oh, about. Is like there are people who are just funny all the time. Yeah. And when he said, "This is my wife," I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> she's like mid seventies. Yeah, I was like, "His wife." Is I old. mean, she's hot as shit, but <laughs> mid seventies. Tom was like, "Greg's a really good guy." I was like, He's a oh, good person. Oh, you thought like this yeah. guy's salt to the earth? I like, go, oh my god, he must. This must have been like his. He, history teacher or something and he, he just, stayed with her he's got a big heart this guy right i away. wanted to have my father do the whole meeting as me but he could not get it together in dress <laughs> rehearsals at the house so we didn't do that you were gonna have him play you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i was just gonna have him because i figured you didn't know what i looked like so i yeah. figured i'd have him he couldn't either. there's no way he could pull it off <laughs> but anyway yeah but so what happened was yeah it all fell apart but but <laughs> then I'm still friends with you guys. Yes. So it's all good. I yeah. got yeah. what I wanted out of it. Thanks, we're, all, uh, we're all good. That's the best part, really. <laughs> well, and, and to make it real clear to people, it's that at the time, nobody could, meaning of the three of us, fully commit to the increasing demands of what the show looked like. When we were brought in to do, like, talk about the show, they were like, you're just going to like show up and then you can participate at your convenience. Yeah. And then they us. tell me like, oh, you can just supervise them and they'll yeah. write the script. So you can, like, they're telling everybody they can just show up. Yeah, just show up. And then <laughs> like, like, who's going to do the fucking work? <laughs> right. And then like, <laughs> then they bring in like uh, some, That's some terrible. other mega producers. Yeah. Let's say. Good guys. Good guys. And yeah. then they were like, we'll just watch him watch you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We, we're we're going to be we're, way back yeah. here, but we'll yeah. take most of the money. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys, good luck. But then, and then the real end of it was like, Getting calls where they're like, Tom, you know, just so you know, you'll probably be in a room for like eight months. I go, this was not part of the equation. No. Uh, and because I had, I had this show that's that the, the one that's coming out, I was trying to sell that. Yeah. And I actually had written a couple scripts for um, Nate Bargatze and we were out trying to sell that. So I was like, all right, look, I want to do this, but I don't know how, yeah. how, how much I can do it. And it was right at the beginning of the, the pandemic pandy, yeah. too. Yeah. It was right at the beginning of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, it all worked out. It all it worked a, out. It's a pretty cool experience. It now you have this show, Sprung. Yeah. Tell us about that one. Oh, yeah. So this is about a bunch of convicts who get out of prison because of COVID. So And it's a comedy, of course. Like and, COVID uh, is, is making... It's so funny. Yeah, like I was reading like that they were letting out prisoners because of COVID. <laughs> and I was like, this is not a great idea, I don't yeah. think. But like, and I was like, all right, well, I, I kind of had like this idea kicking around in my head that I wanted to do with this actor, Garrett Dillahunt about a guy who got out of prison and I was like, well, maybe I'll just turn it into this. And so I kept like maybe 5% of it and changed the rest of it and, uh, and then wrote the script and, uh, and we sent it around. It was like early pandemic, right? Yeah. It was like, yes. it was like March or. How long did it take you to kick out that script? It didn't take that long. I'd say like when I have an idea and I know what it is, it'll yeah. take me like a week, two weeks to kind of like get it a, a, a shit version of it and then i'll yeah. give it to my friends and then they'll like tell me what sucks and give me yeah. some ideas and then I'll, I'll mess with it a little bit more so we went to sell it all around town um but no everybody was like guy this is a pandemic comedy like we don't know how this thing ends like we're yeah. just starting this thing everybody in the world could die we're not you'd be like yeah but they're prisoners they don't care if they die <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. right yeah. they're disposable yeah. yeah so uh but not amazon freebie buddy yeah. they were like we're <laughs> We're on board, you know, and I think partially because they like Bezos the doesn't care if people die. No, I'm not sure. I, 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 I'm going to take the fifth on that. Wait till the show airs. I'm hoping to go to space. Man. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I mean, come on. Yeah. Uh, but no, he doesn't. Yeah. Um, but uh, but so they they were all about it, and so then at that point they go, all right, we'll write like three more scripts, and then if we like it, we'll commit to shoot it. Because I didn't want to shoot a pilot. I just was like, either we do it or we don't do it. Whatever. And um, 
So uh, then I wrote like two more scripts and I was like, yeah, just tell me if you like it at this point. And they liked it. So then we, we do it. And episode one, I think it's a, it's a good selling point for this audience has a, a familiar actor to them yeah joey diaz yeah. <laughs> joey's in two episodes he was you know he was in new jersey he wasn't doing much and i was yeah. like you you know he i'd worked with him a lot in the past i love joey um actually just spoke I, can't, with him. I do karate's tuesday you're not shooting tuesday are you <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm bringing mercy we're going we're going to hershey hershey park so yeah. that's what he did so wednesdays he i swim down. i swim wednesdays do jujitsu <laughs> thursday and you're like wow you're a really active guy <laughs> So yeah, he came down from uh, New Jersey. We have a couple like uh, comedians that played like inmates for quick little things. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy Aaron Weber, uh, who's on uh, the Nate Lamb podcast, and uh, this guy Brian Bates and Josh Wolf, and so it was fun. So they they all came down at the same time, and That's right. it's always fun to see Joey. Yeah, I yeah. think in the pilot he's just sitting on a toilet talking about how to commit the perfect uh, perfect crime yeah that sounds that, that is a conversation that's happened in his real life for sure absolutely i mean <laughs> he just slipped right into it for yeah. sure i just love him because like he was like wearing a ring and i watched like the wardrobe person come over and be like uh, uh we need you to take off the ring <laughs> he wears a ring <laughs> okay and then they look at me i go he fucking wears a ring yeah yeah he wears a ring definitely wears yeah, a ring we're not we're not messing with joey Real prison, a lot of blacks yelling. Uh, I don't know if we should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he told me those stories one time. He's like, they, they yell things to each other and their own, you know, they got their own way of talking. And you're like, no, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, yeah. I did. I did his. I did his podcast one yeah. time with Josh Wolf, and uh, like, you know, everybody gets high before yeah. that podcast, and I was like, I don't know, I don't. Know. And so I, I, I took like a little, you know, little hit off something. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. And then I was like, all right. And then I was like zonked out. And then we talked for like an hour. Yeah. And like Joey does a lot of the talking. And then Josh and him had like all these backstories and stuff. Yeah. So they talk. And like, I jump in once in a while. And I'm like, all right, I'm doing okay. And my head's going crazy inside. And it's like about an hour, 15 minutes <laughs> or so. And then all of a sudden, Joey goes, all right, you guys ready to do this? Should we start recording? <laughs> no. And I'm like, what? 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 Yeah. Start recording? Yeah. And I went and watched it. I think I pulled it off all right, but dude, he did one. I did the same thing as you one time where he goes, "Eat this," and I'm like, "No fucking way!" Right? And it's one of his stars of death, so he cuts the corner off of it. Mm -hmm. Eat that, and I'm like, "All right." I thought I was. I mean, I was like, "This isn't enough to do anything." Well, he then starts doing one of his like just Joey thoughts like stream of consciousness things where he's like san francisco 84 i robbed this chinese lady right I'm like, uh -huh. and it's just like going into this thing he's like they had the best dim sum that was on the corner of state and when uh maine and you're like right and like they used to dip it in this sauce and you're like and then, where do i jump in yeah, on and this like okay anywhere yeah and then he's like it reminded me because i was in vegas 92 and uh there was this, this girl who had one leg and i fucked her while she was and you're just like oh yeah God. and it's just like Da, 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 da. And then I'm getting increasingly high, right? Like I'm like feeling like, oh my God. Yeah. And then he just goes, and it's like an hour of just talking. And then he goes, uh, and I'm just listening to like this, this monologue, just this rapid fire monologue of like crimes and robberies and sex and drugs and all this stuff. And then he's like, yeah. And then when I was in prison, I tried to, I was selling coke to the guy. And then he said no. And so pulled a knife on me. So me and my friends, and you're like, yeah. And then he's like, what's going on with you, Tom Segura? Yeah. Like, out of there. And I was like, ah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing like that. I start talking, and then I look up, and he's like this. Oh, yeah. I've seen that look. <laughs> Just checked out. Yeah. Because he's so high. So high. when he stopped talking is when he feels how high he is. Yes. You know what I mean? Because yeah. he's like on, he's on All like a thousand. All of a sudden, he's just got his thoughts, and it's like, oh, shit. And then he's like done. And then he's like. <laughs> I'm so he just looks at you and he's like, "So what's going on?" I'm like, "You just asked me. Just, I, already, I just told so you." Crazy. We, when we did the um, the degenerates, I was like eight months pregnant, and he and I were sitting in a casino filming the the intro to it, and there's a band playing behind us, like bah, 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 like so fucking loud, and I'm just sitting there waiting for the next take. So we have like a ten minute break. I look over and Joey's fully like, "Yeah, oh yeah, mouth open, High and there's a mind. band behind you oh, in a yeah. Vegas casino, like ding 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 ding." He is that crazy. And then he just gets up and he performs. He's like, time to shoot this next thing. Tolerance. I mean, you know, I tell, I've told so many stories about how high he gets, but the craziest thing is that I saw him one time take like a star of death and do an hour. 
That's cruel. Man. And and murder like functions. Murder. Like have complete control. And then I go like you're not you don't feel that? He's like, What are you talking about? I had like three panic attacks on stage. I'm like panic <laughs> attacks. <laughs> I'm like, how do you fucking deal with that? He's just like, What are you talking about? Just go in. Let's smoke a joint. <laughs> That's the next thing he does. But I love that, him though. There's nothing like him. I mean, you put no, him on the screen. There's nothing the like him. And then he's nothing. always a sweetheart. Like the trailer comes out and he posted. And then like I just see the views go like crazy because people love him. They, they want to see him and stuff. And he's the best. <laughs> he is I the saw best. this meme. Um, it was it was a side by side photo of Joey Diaz and Brad Pitt. And apparently they're both the same age. So, uh, I believe. Uh, I think Brad's a year older. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> oh, it's so just good bad. living. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, yeah. Good times. Wait, do you think he enjoys the rolling panic attacks? Like, remember that guy we knew that smoked crack? And he's like, well, I like to look through the peephole. I, I panic. Oh, and then, yeah. Like, yeah. is that the, the cool part of it? I think you, um, there's either that's a big deterrent or for some, like, because I know another guy <laughs> who actually works in comedy too, not a comedian. And, one time I smoked with him and he was one of these like really invested in, in weed lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. So he had like so many, and he had one like volcano thing where he's like, you got to heat it, but not burn it. And then it came out and I go, <laughs> I go, the thing that I hate though, is that I get real anxiety. I mean like genuine panic. And he goes, I do too. <laughs> and he goes, and I, I love it. You know, I People go, love, I, I don't go, know what, what, I don't know what is desirable about I know. that at all. He goes, I is go it, in, I go in for it every day. Is worst. it the same thing of like <laughs> rock climbing and stuff? Like, is it that th same thing? <laughs> you can do it in your own living room of just yeah. like the adrenaline of just like, oh, I'm fucking oh through this. And yeah. then like, you feel like you come out of it and you're like, I fucking did something today. Maybe, man. maybe that is it. I conquered maybe that shit. I today. conquered it. I think you're yeah. right. Maybe that's it. Or remember that cave diving documentary? Yeah. Where like yeah. these nerds love to cave dive. Yeah. And there's these tiny little openings. But, so, but that's how they feel in their brain. That <laughs> but they those have guys, these tiny little openings that they're they going They said through. that those guys, <laughs> though, horrible. are like chill with. They're not panicked doing that. You know what I mean? It chills them out to focus that much. Maybe it's the focus. Like you're saying, it's like the you're going through the eye of the needle. I don't know. I love the feeling there. of, a, of like a good high buzz. Horrific is the and word. And as soon as it gets to anxiety, I go, this is the worst nightmare. It's the of worst. Life, you know? Yeah. Like if you want to relax at the end of the day, that's <laughs> yeah. nice. But like, why would you want to get yourself so crazy? Yeah. <laughs> or even too much alcohol. It's, that's a bummer too. You know? You're yeah. Like, oh, that was too much. Yeah. 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 That yeah. one shot. Sick. I remember there was a round of tequila shots at my birthday party oh my and it was like whoever did it was I like tipped like over and i put it down <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it takes a long time to realize <laughs> to figure it out <laughs> to figure it out and to like figure out too like with like food even food yeah. exercise drugs whatever how is this going to make me feel after yeah instead of during yeah the yes. after lasts so much I longer know. and the, there's this thing with i, I mean, mean physically and mentally mentally both, the yeah. after can last years years so you're like true. why did i do that but the fucking so true the there's like an age thing too where you it takes i mean it took me a while to like you know people would go shots and you're like all right and i remember that at that party you know uh, somebody goes fuck right after that and i go full chart i go what oh yeah full chart he goes like, Shit, dude. he goes fuck i'm drunk and I go, what? He goes, I did that shot. And he goes, now I, f I feel drunk now. And I was like, that's exactly why I put it down. I just knew yeah. that it yeah. would turn. And then the ride home feels different. <laughs> sleep feels different. Panic. Yeah. You wake up. You feel like I think I was one of the first people in like my like friends, like in the 20s and stuff that like was be the first to be like, hey, take a shot. And I'd be like, no. And they'd be like, pussy. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's fine. Sure. It's, I'm the pussy. That's right. fine. I'm I did feel shots. great tomorrow. Yep. I did shots a couple weeks ago somewhere like on tour and it was like I didn't do a lot but I remember when somebody goes have another one I was like no mm -mm. that first one cuz we had been having regular drinks like that first one just took me over the edge. like if I have that one it's going to be puking like I don't want it anymore you just it's going <laughs> to ruin blood and I slept in like eyes. shit that yeah, night of course. Uh, even even with food like you said I'm yeah. finally learning at 46 like Okay, I can eat like that huge ass piece of cake, but that shit's gonna live on my body now for like yeah. months. Like, you just can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how good does that thing taste? Really? I, I don't drink that much, but when I do drink, I'll like 
like I was, I'll tell you, I was drink. I went out to dinner with this guy I hadn't seen in like 20 years. And it was him and his uh, fiance, this guy he met in Tijuana, who was like half his age. And we went to dinner with them. And I had like a drink at dinner. And I agreed to officiate their wedding. And we ended up doing it in my backyard. <laughs> that day? Like three days later. Really? I went to getordained.com. There was like five of us in my backyard. My I wife remember. was like, what is happening? This was like last week. This was oh, like, oh, this happened oh, last wow. week. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. And I pronounced them. This is not a lie. I pronounced them Mr. and Mr. Fister. That's their name. <laughs> That's their name. That's a it great was a name. lovely ceremony. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm glad I did it. But had I not had that drink, I don't think uh, yeah. Yeah. it never would have happened. Changed your whole week. It did change our your, whole week. Uh, <laughs> your your in judgment changes completely you know impairment yeah 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 i'll get myself into trouble yeah this is somebody who may have had a drink or two uh they decided to get that <laughs> i know i saw this this is so amazing so this this popped into my stories my mentions and i do believe it's real yeah been wanting to do my knuckles for years just couldn't decide what to do only fitting i pay respect to the main two mommies and then he got a wow. tattooed fgtrtd um on his uh on his knuckles. Yeah. Wow. Knuckles that ride till death. I would love to be there. I'd love there to be like a super cut of every time someone's like, what's that? Like, what is that? <laughs> what's that stand for? What's it say on your hands? And he I always has to like give a story. I saw a guy at the <laughs> Albertsons yeah. yesterday, old man. He was, he had a walker and he was with his wife and she was doing most of the moving around and shopping and stuff. And he had a mask, but he had it real thin just on his nose. Like it was like really weird. And on his arm, I think it was a, sharpie but it might have been a tattoo and in block letters it just said like phil stevenson is a dick <laughs> and it's been it kept me up last night that yeah. i didn't ask him yeah oh, what does that mean i kept like trying to get like grapes and look over and read it and everything but what a great tattoo yeah i mean it's and he so was like hard. 80 years old. yeah that's the best part too that he how who knows how many years he's had that and how if he's still mad at Greg, is it Greg Stevenson? It was Phil, Phil. Stevenson. Phil Stevenson? Like, yeah. what's the grudge? You're right. The story behind that. Or is it like a memento thing? And it's like him. He's Phil Stevenson. And oh, he has right. to remind himself. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a, a dick. I'm a dick. Yeah. I, w I was running all the scenarios. It feels like oh, a really amazing. good, like, 1950s kind of story, too. Like, where that was such a bold thing to do. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. that yeah. guy Using was language. everyone yeah. knew that guy yeah. in town. Oh, yeah. He was head of the motorcycle gang. Yeah. You're talking about Phil Stevenson? Yeah. That guy's a real dick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you don't believe me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look what he did to me. Look what he did to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. That's that, a good one. Oh, fuck. Yeah. That's a really good one. To I call somebody out for life? For yeah. life, on your homie. arm? You hate a, that this fool. This person's a piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Maybe but, it was someone he fought over an armrest on a plane with or something. I don't know. <laughs> That's hilarious. I got I'm gonna go back there and look for him. But this one too, this is special. This is gonna this is the gift that keeps on giving all yeah. his whole life. You have all I wanted to point this out. You have always emphasized the importance. You've made it I actually notice it in a non sexual way, the importance of bras. Oh my gosh. Right? Like yeah. every time we're out, she's been like, she's like, this person's not wearing a supportive bra. Mm -mm. Look at it. And I, I, I notice it now. And I think what a lot of those, what a lot of women need is like the bra place to go to. Like, yes. Like, you know what I mean? Like you need, some of them just don't know where to go. Absolutely. And then we found them. Here we are at yeah. CC's Laundry, MrBra.com. MrBra.com, we sell bras. We have every size you can I've imagine. This guy. We yeah. have all sorts of foundation garments, okay? We sell bridal bras, lingerie, corsets, you know, hard to fit bras, you know, strapless, nursing home, maternity. We sell whatever type bra you could need here at MrBra.com. It's also just, I think, the kind of person that most women want to buy a bra from. Well, see, know? I found this guy on the talk, yeah. and I immediately scrolled over because I was like, pervert, no thanks. <laughs> because everybody knows you get fitted by a, a, an aggressive Russian lady. Yes. That's who takes care of your tetas, yeah. not Santa Claus. <laughs> this is not appropriate. I love that it looks like a hardware store at first. Too, <laughs> yeah. That it's just like <laughs> he's standing behind that desk with those wooden shelves and the camera work is excellent. Excellent. As well. yeah. Yeah. So excellent. Good. Just leave him for a little bit. Artistic. Come back. Find him. <laughs> so, so good. It's really Here, nice. You've got an old cup. 
An O we cup. An o o cup. cup. Holy cup. shit. Negative, dude. You need Damn. an O cup. I've got it. Yeah, he does. L M N O P O. You know? Yeah, but. Look at this. What do I have here? I've got a P cup. Can you believe it? P cup. A P cup. Who the heck has a P cup? Yeah, he, then he's Mr. not an expert. MrBra.com. Here you are. Here's your basic <gasps> P cup. Holy shit, that. dude. Non underwire. Yeah, well, that, that doesn't work. Non underwire. You need a bra. You need to be fit. You need a good bra. You come to MrBra.com. Mr. I love it. And he's got, and I love that he has the measuring tape around his neck. Like, bring those titties bring over those titties here. Yeah. I'm ready. Bring them in. I'll fit you. I'll fit them. Yeah. I'll fit them. And that, I mean, from a pee cup, I don't know if that thing's long enough. I that, don't know. Those are massive. And, and by the way, a pee cup with no underwire, it's not going to support your mushy purples. It's yeah. going to, it's just going to mash them down. Listen, you need titties yeah. in order to fit titties. And it's nice oh. to be able to see behind the internet. Because if you go to MrBroad.com, <laughs> you're not you necessarily this. not going to, you're not going to know exactly. Look at that screen. That's what you see Oh, at okay. Mr. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Mr. So you, Bra. You, you have a whole, you have no idea what's going on behind the, Guess that what? screen. She's not at the store. You no. don't see her at MrBroad.com. definitely not at MrBroad.com. You see him when you walk into MrBroad.com. This com. fucking dude. Yeah. No, not voluntarily. She's fuck. not there. No. She might be in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, lovely. What a lovely girl. Yeah, I don't trust this guy. I'm not into this guy no? at all. I don't. I would never go to him. I don't trust him. Yeah. Again, there's no reason. No underwire and a pee cup. It's crazy. It's right? stupid. Yeah. It still it doesn't make sense. It's like buying a, a, a what do you guys wear when you play football? A cup, yeah, like a, a cup. soft cup. Yeah. It's silly. You need a hard cup. There's no structural cup. integrity. Th thank you. So yeah. when do you net like? Is not no underwire ever okay? For big purples, if you got big cans, I have big cans. The yeah. only time I wear no underwear is when I'm at home with you guys mm -hmm. and like I don't care. The, throw caution to the wind, they flop around. But if you want your tits to look normal, like I wear yeah. underbra underwear. You that wear. pea cup looks like one of those like bras you put like on a Nissan Sentra or something. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> Like a bra. Yeah, to protect yeah. the it looks like the same like size. Like the front of a car. Yeah. 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 Why That's do people true. put bras on their cars? Just to like it's the inexpensive way to protect that paint because that's where things are going to hit the car oh, first. You know, it's the same shit. as having like plastic on your furniture. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. So it's like, but what are you protecting it? Like, when are yeah. you going to? Yeah. What, what are you, you gonna protecting live? it for? Yeah, live. Yeah. Take the bra off. Enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Let your tits hang. Yeah. Yeah. Don't cover your front. Do you know that when I met Tom? My parents had covered the furniture and put seat covers on their car seats. And so remember, I was like, oh, I have this new car. I have to put car the seats on the car. He's like, what? Yeah. He doesn't. And to this day, you don't let me cover the furniture and the kids always fuck it up. Yeah, that's true. I just, like you said, I just live. Yeah, just know. live. And then you'll, I mean, you knew yeah. when you had kids, they were going to fuck everything they up. They fuck everything up. They're wild, right? They're fun. Yeah. Beyond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beyond I'm wild. so past all that now. All of them are gone. Aww. Even like the high schooler ones at this cool boarding school, out hippie boarding school, Eddie loves. So yeah, we're empty nesters. So wait, when do they stop being so wild? <sighs> I guess it depends on the kids, right? But like, I mean, yours are how old right now? Four, Four and, and six. six. Okay, so yeah, you're at that age and it's just like craziness. It's just literally like one runs up to me and elbows me. Good morning, mom. The other one just slaps me on the butt. Hey, mom. If I take off my shirt in front of the four-year-old, he's slapping my tits. Oh, hey, yeah. mom. Like, Jesus Christ. They sleep on top of our head and they just, they rough house with him. They get real rough with me. Kick, punch. Oh, yeah? Oh, man. Slap. The worst is that laying on a couch and you're just, I'm just relaxing on this couch. And then <laughs> no, all of a sudden- not. I feel like somebody dropped a safe on me, and it's that they, what the dude jumped and then does knees first into <laughs> my back. I think you're invincible. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, oh, fuck. And he's like, sorry, Dad, sorry, sorry. I'm like, it's like the 10th time, man. Give my back a break, dude. Yeah. One of my favorite stories when they were really little is one of them came up to me, and he's just like, Dad, my butt hurts. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And he's like, my butt hurts. I'm like, like the cheek? Like you said? He goes, no, the hole. It hurts. <laughs> oh, no. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, what do you want me to look at it or something? And he's like, yeah, can you look at it? And I'm like, yeah, all right. So then like he pulls his pants down and he spreads his little ass cheeks there. And I got to like get down and look, you know, and I'm like, look, and I'm like, what? The? And I take, I go, buddy, there's a sticker of a butterfly. 
right on your butthole. And he turns around and goes, I know, I put it there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right, I like this That's guy. That's good. Uh, this guy's good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. That's what uh, our oldest did. He goes, hey, you want to, he goes, I got a surprise. You want to? You want a surprise? And I'm like, <laughs> no, okay. No. He goes, you ready? And I go, yeah. He goes, all right. And then he just turns around, spreads his cheeks and farts. And he goes, surprise. <laughs> and I was like, that was pretty good. Genius. Yeah. yeah. He was buck naked. Yeah. Yeah. So those times are awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, so you got to just like love all that stuff. I love it. I just wish there was an on and off switch. Like I, I wish there, like I wish I could be a parent and be fully rested. You know what I mean? Not. Oh, you wanted to be a dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's what oh you want to yeah see it's a lot better yeah. then you like sleep you pretend you don't hear them oh yeah you go to work oh i gotta go to work yeah, 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 yeah. and no. i'm there 24 yeah, sorry yeah it's yeah true. you like your house <laughs> <laughs> i know i know that's what i have to tell myself like yeah but i got all this cool stuff um, it's true. Nobody tells you that. It really is mom that, 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 that uh, you know, uh, yeah. raises the kid. I mean, I was working us. so much. I was work. I was doing these single camera shows and I was working like 14 hours a day and it was like, yeah. it was nuts, you know? Yeah. And but so, but that's just, the, that that's was life. the deal. That was that's the deal right. with us, you know? Yeah. All good. Kind of knew that going in. She did a good job though. She did. You, yeah. Your kids sound awesome. Your kids are pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So you're empty nesters. So like, what do you, so what happens when they leave? What do you, what do you do? You know, the other night, it was like 7.30 at night and we were playing gin and listening to classical music and eating hard candy. And I'm like, we're like 80 years old right now. <laughs> Except that like you I realized- loved it. Oh, you did love it? Uh, yeah. But you got years of this ahead of you, man. I know. So we got to figure it out. Like, I think there's a lot of traveling in our future and, and that kind of stuff. And, uh, but uh, it's, it's different. It's an adjustment. And it's adjustment. Like my wife, like you raised three kids. That was your life for- mm -hmm. 24 years so there's like what is she, you know what is she, what is she gonna do you know what does she want to do now and ever and she's like volunteering and stuff but uh it is weird and it's and it's weird that it happened before we thought it would happen and it's funny i tell my my friends i'm like oh yeah my son's going to a boarding school and they're like oh shit what happened there <laughs> yeah. you know and i know no matter what i say they walk away and go that kid's on heroin or yeah, something, sure. <laughs> or something. <laughs> but he's just this like outdoor hippie like kid that lo found the school and just loves it and just is oh, thriving. I don't want to ask where it is, but is it close enough? Yeah, it's in California. It's close okay. enough. We visit him and stuff and, and, and he just loves it. Like he was at this, he was at this, this private school where it's like an LA private school and like he likes basketball, but he's not fantastic. I mean, look at what he comes from. He's not going to be great <laughs> at basketball, right? But like he loves it and this school he's at, it's like LeBron James's kid is there and it's just like it's a basketball factory and there's no way he could ever play and he goes to this hippie boarding school and like he's the starting you know point guard freshman year and yeah. i watched them play and i was like they're never i, I watch them practice i go they're never gonna win a game yeah like they're just like all the best they're dribbling over their head and it's like the socks are mismatched yeah. and like they went undefeated because <laughs> they, they play did? these other oh right teams of these other schools and they're having a blast and the sportsmanship like other people are like they're tying the other team's shoes in the middle of a play, you know, but what? they're having a blast. Yeah. And it's this cool school. You can bring a dog with you if you want. Oh, that's cool. There's no cool. phones allowed. Damn, cool. really? Yeah. And how long, how much school does he have left? It's uh, he's got three more years. He just oh, finished wow. his freshman year. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Nice. wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's a, it's a cool place. My oldest one calls it Amish Hogwarts. Ah, and he's that's like, cool. yeah, but you but, get him for the summer or no? Yeah. Yeah. Summer. Yeah. And he's there like six weeks and then he comes home for a week and he doesn't have anything to do then. And we go visit him all the time. Yeah. Like we go up on the weekends and take him to dinner and stuff. So we still see him a lot. That's cool. That's cool. But, uh, but yeah, he was the, and also when he left, we were like, oh man, he's kind of fun to hang with. Yeah. This is a bummer. I wonder if we could get our kids to do that now, like at four or six. <laughs> you could get them in there. I could talk enough. to somebody. Could if you, you? If you pay enough money, yeah. they'll take them. All right, we'll write a check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's how they used to do it, like in England. Yeah. You know, you just send your kid to boarding school when they're, what, like Ellis's age, I think, six, six or seven. Then at, when they're like 18, you're like, you're a man now. Yeah. And it's good to see you again, son. Like all the royals <laughs> Shake do his hand. that. Yeah. yeah, if you yeah. give my wife another like year, I think she might take your kids for you. Okay, <laughs> she could take them. She did a good job. But then so. they're fun at that. Like they're don't they chill a little bit? Oh another well, year? Mm. So. it all changes. Yeah, you know, there's always drama some for one reason or another. But yeah, it's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This no, is drama. Fun. One day when Nick says the rooster followed him and attacked him. Oh, it's Nick. 
flares up and he's doing his thing and he's trying to jump up at me. He was trying to get the animal away. And I try to hit it, but the chicken's jumping up at me and I accidentally knocked it in the head. You know, call it a lucky shot, whatever. But when Dave Felice came home, all he saw was his rooster <gasps> dead in a ditch. Oh. I said, I'm calling JSO. I called JSO. JSO didn't do nothing. Then a couple of days later, I, I realized I could call animal control. And in late June, James Nix went to jail for animal cruelty. Next thing you know, he calls the chicken police on me. <laughs> While the neighbors continue the fight, chicken Nix police. says he never should have been arrested. I didn't know to give it a 21 gun salute. CPR, mouth to mouth, you know, or call the chicken ambulance. Chickens are dying every day, people, at churches, Popeyes, and Kentucky Fried Chicken. Really. There you go. I Chick think this Fil guy has a really good point. He has a good point. And yeah. roosters are mean sons of bitches, yeah. too. Like, my my father-in-law has chickens and a rooster, and anytime he goes in that thing, that rooster just attacks the hell out of him. Really? Mm. And he just kicks it. He kicks it across the thing because yeah. like it's coming after him. It'll, come, it'll peck at you, right? Oh, it'll peck. He's a human and that's a rooster. They, yeah. he's, you're not going to let him win that fight. Yeah. Mm -mm. I don't know. I think I'm with this guy. Yeah. Yeah, Plus, I'm going to steal this for a show, I think. I this is a scene out of every show yeah. I've ever done. It'd be great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you at least have to use the line. He calls the chicken police I mean, on me. It's, it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It's perfect. The chicken yeah. police. Yeah. Chicken police. Yeah. He's not a chicken, sir. He's a rooster. <laughs> That chickens might be the broad day, guy's people, brother. Churches, Popeyes, and <laughs> yeah, chickens are dying every day, man. So good, so good. Holy shit, dude! Yeah. Felony charge. Felony, yeah. Oh, animal cruelty. I mean that that is the animal. Oh, that Jesus. seems so excessive. Yeah. It seemed like if you tell the you know the story of like this thing's coming at me. Yeah, it's, he's defending himself against a, an angry rooster. And what about yeah. the other guy who can't keep his rooster in check? That's yeah. another point. Like the neighbor. Like yeah. why isn't that guy? I think he should be in trouble. I think I'd so like too. to be a character witness. If this guy's out there, I'd like to be a character witness for him. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go to wherever they are. I'd yeah. like to do that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm a minister now, so you I have are. some credibility. That's true. Ask Mr. Fister and Mr. Fister. I'll have everybody come. Yeah. They'll Mr. be my character Fister. witness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm already into this show. If you sell this show, I'm definitely in. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. We should develop this and then not do it. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should spend like two or three months. Yeah. I'm perfect. And take meetings. Yeah, we'll take meetings. Yeah. We'll get some high level people involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. like uh, Brian Grazier or yeah, whatever. Yeah. What's the OP's Ron name? Howard. Ron Howard. Yeah. We'll get them involved. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll just disappear. And they'll be like, we are on board with this. And we're like, great. We just got an offer today, but we got to go. My favorite part of that whole story, by the way, <laughs> was when it was all falling apart and then you called somebody. And then they called me and they go, I think we talked everybody off a ledge. <laughs> Everything's going to be fine. And then you called me and said, yeah, we're firing those people. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, that was my favorite part. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that is what happened. You're like, everything's cool. I was like, it's not cool. <laughs> it's not cool. But they, but everybody, when they try to put that stuff together, like they just do whatever they can to keep it together. Well, yeah. One of the guys was like, he goes, I go, yeah, you know, I just don't like this, this, and this about it. And he goes, yeah, sometimes it's just how it goes. I'm like, yeah. no, it's not. I, it's They'll say whatever they can. To, one time I ended up in a meeting with Billy Baldwin, I think to play My Name is Earl, to play Earl, My Name is Earl. Mm -hmm. And they were like, he just read the script and he loves it. He loves it so much. He wants to do it. He just wants to have a meeting to... To, to convince you and I'm like yeah, I don't know if he's really the guy for this I like him but like yeah if he wants to have a meeting that bad so then he shows up and he's like sits down and he goes so I don't know I don't think I'm the guy for this but they tell me you really want me and you oh want to convince me about God. and I'm like nah dude that's what they told me and we were just like started laughing about like these motherfuckers that's just yeah and then he left and that was that yeah that's how, that's the God. That is exactly how Hollywood works. Yeah, we'll get two people in a room and just let them get in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why do they have to lie though? You know, we've had people whose management have been like they're a big fan of your mom's house, the biggest fan ever, and then the person shows up and they have no fucking idea. That one sucks. And you're like, a lot of times when they go, to this us. person said that they would absolutely just die to be on. I go, all right. Well, I mean, that sounds like it's like it'll be fun. Yeah. And then they get here and they're like, what's up with the clips? And you're yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, why is this guy farting? Yeah. yeah. Like, what? Did you even know? Yeah. Or the other one is uh, <laughs> I had a, a meeting set with someone who the agent was like, we want you to meet with this person. And I go, why? And they're like, well, and they, they brought about like some similar 
background things of us like you know garcia he's that's a spanish last name you have a spanish last name and i was like that's why we're meeting <laughs> and then they were like no i think it'll be good and i go okay and then i got on the meeting with this person it was a zoom meeting and he was like so you wanted to meet and i was like yeah we have similar last names <laughs> yeah i don't know what to tell you man like i didn't ask for this either <laughs> Maybe we could share, yeah. like, I have some monogram sweaters that don't fit yeah. anymore. <laughs> and then we just, like, talked about, like, what we'd had for lunch. And I was like, you yeah. seem like a nice guy. I don't know what the fuck we're doing. Well, when we first met, we talked about how, like, we both, at, like, I have this Madrid, Spain yes. background and stuff. And Christina noted that we kind of looked similar because, you know, if I take off my mm -hmm. hat, we have, like, a similar yeah. look. Yeah. But then, like, but I say <laughs> that I look like you, like, if they left you in the dryer a little bit too uh -huh. long because I'm small. And then I went to see you in Oxnard. And I walked up and this drunk guy turns around and he looks at me and goes, oh shit, Tom got AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> and I yeah. was like, yeah, 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 I gotta get on stage now, man. Yeah, but yeah, sorry, yeah, I have AIDS. I do have AIDS. Yeah. Uh, That's a perfect description. That is perfect. By the way, that was a fun show. That was a, really that was a fun show. Yeah. I, I, I hadn't ever seen you live before. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Let me ask you this question, though, because like this is the kind of shit that goes through my head sometimes. I get a little crazy. So like I see like, oh, you're going to be in Oxnard. And I'm like, all right, I don't live far from Oxnard. And I'd like to see him. And, and like I'm sure in L.A. people like are asking for tickets, whatever. So I'll just I'll go see him in Oxnard. And I was going to bring my buddy Tim, who lives around there, too. But he was out of town. And I was like, all right, well, I could bring my wife, but I kind of want to, I haven't seen Tom. I want to like hang out beforehand. I don't know if it's going to be weird. So I was like, I'll just go alone. But then I'm driving up to the show and I'm like, is this weird mm. that I'm coming to the show alone? Like that's no. the kind of shit I go through my head. It's definitely not mm -mm. weird. Okay. Yeah, Hi, good. Highly encouraged. Okay, good, good, Highly good. encouraged. Good. Okay, yeah. good. I'm, I feel better about it. Yeah. Because I was really like, was... I got home to my wife and I was like, is it weird? Am I no. Can weird, I tell you the, the only thing? Because yeah. I went to a concert can alone once yeah. and that felt fucking weird. But yeah. I think a comedy show, a movie you can do alone. Totally. Absolutely. But a music and concert, no. Personally, if it's like somebody that I know, the most the most fun is like like no offense to your friend Tim, but like that I get to hang out exactly. with my friends. Well, that's what I that's the way so, I was thinking about it too, because I was just like, no, I want to hang out. I want to hang out. And then uh, you were with Sickler. I want to meet Sickler because we, we're both from like And we the had Maryland. this great hang backstage. Oh, it was great. And yeah. the funny thing is that like we were taking photos. I remember this moment. Oh, yeah. Sean, who's a photographer everywhere, he's like, all right, to get this photo though, I actually need this light to be here. He goes, uh, hey, Greg. So Greg, the the show writer, producer, creator, he's like, hold this. So Greg's like our grip. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> holding a light. <laughs> And then I got a I got a picture of me holding the light. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, great. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I did a good hell of a job. There is yeah. no I I don't want to, but to I pee. have to go to the bathroom. Shit. So, so I'll just play this, and then like I got to go to the bathroom. Just okay? go take a shit. I know, but just you know, just watch this, and then I'll go to the bathroom. All right. All right. Hello. Are you pooping? Hello. I don't like this at all. Well, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. It's a toeless foot. Can you, you can't walk with a toeless foot, right? Wait, Greg, you can't walk. You need toes to balance out. I want to know so much about this. I want to know. I want to know where that, where the toes are. It's mm. such a clean. Mm. It looks like a different. Like it's it's not a human yeah it looks like a like a baby dinosaur like one of those yeah like baby dinosaurs yeah 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 yeah, yeah. maybe it was frostbite i feel like frostbite can't that take your toes off that cleanly yeah does it take and them off all? google frost frostbite after frostbite toe Ugh. yeah it's so smooth Ugh. i kind of want to touch it <laughs> yeah see like that's what i would think Frostbite, yeah, because they turn black or you lose a couple. Do they fall off? But though? to lose all of them. Maybe they dropped a rock on their foot and lost all their toesies. And from the look of everything else, it looks like they're fairly athletic. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. So uh, I, they look healthy. <laughs> and then are the pants all the way off? I. That's an interesting point. That's an interesting point. Yeah, They're all the way do off. do that? Yeah, why do you... So this isn't... This doesn't make sense. Like, have you ever tried a real bidet? 
What? Yeah. Uh, like a real one. So are you yeah. supposed to take your pants all the way off? Oh, my old, my, my old, uh, the house I moved into at first, it had a real bidet. It had like the toilet and then a bidet next to it. Well, yeah, fuck, yeah, yeah. finally. I've been waiting yeah, 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 to talk yeah, yeah. to you then. Yeah, okay, yeah, so it, had, then, it had both. So walk me through how do you, so then you must pull your pants all the way down your ankles. Yeah, I think you got to give them the ankles or you're going to get wet. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a fucking chore, right? Yeah. But at least you're at home. Yeah. This feels like it's at an airport or <laughs> a Wendy's or something. Like you have to be confident that you're going to make a mess if you take your pants off and you don't even hang them up on that little hook that's Ooh, in there. Just let it fall You on just the put floor. it right on the floor. <sighs> but you might just be like, fuck it. I don't have toes. What's the point? <laughs> that's the point. But there's something else in between. It looks like a hose. I want to say it looks like a garden <laughs> hose, but I don't think it is a garden hose, right? Yeah, because if you bring your own hose, too, you that's a lot of cleanup. <laughs> that's an admission. That is a lot of cleanup. Do you think they can wear shoes? Are they wearing Birkenstocks? Do you wear shoes to cover up that you little? You can't wear flip-flops. I know that. <laughs> that's out. That's out 100%. Um, did, were there any shoes on the ground? I don't see any. There was just, there was just pants. Well, I'm so happy Tom left us with this clip. It's This is so fucking disturbing. And then he leaves to go take a shit in the middle of the show. Mm-hmm. Have you known anybody who just takes shits in the middle of their podcast? No. No. Very rare. Yeah. If you work with somebody who's like, hold on, guys. I just like thought production. Like in the middle of a scene, it's like, I'm going to go take a shit. Yeah. They just yell cut. Yeah. They're just like, hey, guys, I really have to like shit. Like Cloris Leachman. It's just like, <laughs> ah. Burt Reynolds ever go like, guys, I have to take a shit. <laughs> Leave. I could see him doing it. Yeah. I could see him doing it. When he died, I bought all his stationery. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, his, all his stationery. So I have all his stationery, and then I send letters to people from dead oh, Burt Reynolds. I love, what, that's so fucking amazing. What does it say? Like, what does it, just it look says like? It says Burt Reynolds at the top. I have a couple different styles, and then a letter, like envelopes that say Burt Reynolds on the back, and then a couple like little just like note cards with his face on it. And I yeah, love I just that. yeah, it's great. I love or I'll that. send like letters like just him checking in from heaven, but <laughs> as he talks about heaven, he just talks about how hot it is and his roommate the serial killer is always talking <laughs> and Hitler is a pain in the ass, but he just he thinks he's in heaven. It's amazing. Yeah. You're so creative. This is how your brain works. This is what I'm talking about. It's just fun. I think you believe in fun. I think that's why I, I love you so much is when we pulled up to your house, I'm not going to tell people what you have in your home, but I love that it, there's silliness happening. From the moment you pull up to Greg's yeah. house, you're like, oh my gosh, who does this? Well, I just have those goofy old cars, yeah. Like but a pacer yeah, and like, yeah. yeah. But then you even have the sign to your house. Wouldn't it say Casa de Garcia? Oh no, it says the Hidden Hillbillies. Yeah, everybody in that neighborhood has little signs that they put oh, up. Oh, I didn't yeah, yeah, know yeah, that, yeah, but yeah, I just yeah. love that stuff. <laughs> I think it's so fun. Yeah. When did you learn that life could be fun or did you always have this? I think I always like saw it as my duty for whatever reason to like, all right, how can I make this a more fun experience? Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. It might have been like all the way back from just being small and being like a protective, like, all right, I'm going to be the fun guy. I'm going to figure out how to, right. I'm, that's how I'm going to survive. I'm going to like, and so I take pride in like figuring out like, all right, how can I make this situation a little bit more fun? How can yeah. we have more fun with this? What can be goofy? Yeah. Like just as a kick, like last two weeks ago, I wasn't doing anything, and Jimmy Buffett has this cruise. <laughs> Margaritaville at sea. Uh, wow, Margaritaville. Are you guys familiar with Margaritaville at sea? <laughs> no. How was your shit? First of all, let's press pause on this topic, because okay. this is obviously okay. close to the YMH heart. Yeah. It's Margaritaville. Oh. oh. But I actually have a video of me on it. But Oh, shit. Well, send it you to Nadav. Oh, buddy. I went on it two weeks ago. You went on, the how long was the cruise? cruise. <laughs> it's a two-day cruise. You went on a two-day Margaritaville cruise? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you why. Oh, by the way, so what do you guys think of this? Well, we don't know. We can't figure out how the toes got cut off so cleanly. Like we thought it maybe frostbite. That's not frostbite. But then is that a hose in between their legs or did someone drop, take off their pants? They took the off pants their pants up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so gross. And then, Greg goes, it looks like they're very healthy. Yeah, it's a healthy, it's a well, healthy the, person, you can tell. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is a person who wakes up, kale shake, jog. 
you know, meditation. Meditation. And we think that's a hose, journal. maybe between I, their legs. I thought it looked like a hose, but Tom's oh. saying it's pants. Yeah, they they took their pants off. You know, um, I feel a rumble in my tummy too, but I think it just might be from the buffalo sauce that I put on my chicken for lunchtime. You yeah. all right? I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't good. Uh, you can airdrop that. Oh, shit. All no. right. Well, it's texting right now. Oh. It's almost done. It's done. To me? No, to him. Oh, okay, okay. The number I texted when I got here. Oh, okay. You went on the Margaritaville cruise. Oh, yeah. Now, did they hand you a menu, and they're like, the slam and bam and the da 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 like all those stupid drinks? Um, so so here's the deal. So I wrote a... a That's right. Yeah. Yes. I wrote oh, a I musical for Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> Escape from just, Margaritaville. I just Stop. remember this. Uh, I get a call one day from my buddy Michael Mal, and he goes, do you want to write a Broadway <laughs> musical? And I was like, what are you fucking talking about? Like, I don't even like musicals. <sighs> and uh, Michael Malley wrote Three Years from 30. I was in that play when I was 27. Go yeah, ahead. he does a lot. Yeah, he does a lot of oh uh, playwriting and stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's a talented dude. And so he's like, look, it's Jimmy Buffett's music. They have all the money. We can make a mint. And we just have to write. We just have to come up with a script that organically has his songs in it. Like we, we're gonna make up our own story, comedy, and it is, we get to his songs. I'm like, all right, I know a lot of people that love Jimmy Buffett and my wife likes him. And like, I'm like, yeah, well, it could be cool. And same thing, like, all right, I'll hang out with Jimmy Buffett. You know, why not? Yeah. And we actually went out and met him one night and he, I ended up in a headlock. He had me in a headlock and he was like, we're pirates, Greg, we're pirates, me and you. And I'm like, all right, we'll do this. Like, it'll uh -huh. be a couple months, five years later, it, it goes on Broadway. And five it, years. Five years. And it was cool. Like, like it was fun, like, uh, doing it. And, like, I was on planes where it was just me and Jimmy Buffett, and he's flying. And, and it was, like, it was a crazy experience. Holy shit. Why did it take five years? That's what these things take. I, it's not like TV. It takes forever because you turn in a script, and then you don't hear anything for eight months. Gotcha. And the, the producers are working on other things. And the producers are, like, they're, like, billionaires of, like, frozen shrimp, like a wife of a frozen shrimp tycoon and whatever yeah. and like they're giving you notes on comedy and you're, you're like, like mm -mm. oh man and then there's like a director who's like five years i never saw him laugh and it was but buffett was great he was fun he was he was he was he's jimmy buffett he's expect you know he's what you think he's he would flying be. his own plane oh yeah 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 he flies his own plane and stuff yeah. no it's shit margaritaville yeah yeah well, dang no he's got it going is on he a, is he as fun as as margaritaville is like he's really that fun guy he was fun yeah he was just yeah. a chill fun dude and why wouldn't you be you're yeah. in your 70s you just kick off your shoes and you play concerts to people and everything and you just yeah he's 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 a chill guy like one day i, I went i was going out and we were having margaritas on national margarita day we we're meeting him for like drinks in like beverly hills somewhere and my wife was like i want to have drink margarita will and i'm like well write a musical i don't know what to tell you <laughs> yeah that's how you get in <laughs> so anyway so they so we did this thing and now he has the margaritaville at sea cruise and they had said something to me like hey will you write a version of the musical to do a show on the ship and i was like yeah i'll do that whatever and then they were like yeah we can't do it we can't do it we don't have time and so then I saw that he and another guy wrote a show on the ship. And I'm like, okay, good for them. They just did their own show. That's fine. But then somebody sent me a clip and I was like, that looks like, that, that 10 second clip looks like our show. And no. I was like, no, there's no way. There's no way. There's no way. Because I know the people involved and it's like, there's no way they would do that. But I was like, I, but now I got to know. I got to know. So I just called my sister. She's in Virginia. I'm like, hey, you want to go on the Margaritaville cruise? <laughs> like next Wednesday, she's like, I'm in. And so we went, so we went down to West Palm Beach. You leave at like five o'clock on a Wednesday. You're in the Bahamas at 9 a.m. the next morning. Nice. You get off the ship, you just go to the beach for the day, you get back on the ship, and you're back in West Palm Beach at 9 a.m. on Friday, and you're off the ship, and that's it. And did you find out? If oh, it, it's nothing like it. Oh, okay. Thank it's nothing God. like it. No, no, no. It's nothing like so, it. So I knew that the first night. So I'm like, now we're just on the Margaritaville cruise. Yeah. And thank goodness my sister and I, we can just goof on it and have yeah. fun. I won the trivia contest. So is two everybody days in a row. that goes on that like a fan or no? No. 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 First of all, there's like, uh, there's a video. Oh, yeah. We have a video. This is 20 minutes before we shove off. Leave Florida. Leave Florida. And so you see, like, nobody's on the ship. Oh, yeah. 20 minutes this before? This is 20 minutes before we leave. Why is it so empty? That's a good question. But this is we're in the port, and I wanted to fit in. 
<laughs> I thought there'd be a lot of Jimmy Buffett fans. <laughs> so, you know, I was, I was ready. I'm ready. Like, I'm ready to cruise, right? Dude. Yeah. Um, this is why you're the best. There was no one else. There was no one else in you know any I, Jimmy Buffett stuff. I love about this. <laughs> is Everything. that I, if I saw you, I didn't know you. Yeah. I'd be like, hey, check out this guy. And then I know that she'd be like, that guy's a drunk. That yeah. guy's a yeah. fucking alcoholic. Oh, people mess. thought I yeah. was a lunatic. Yeah. But then like I was in good company because like there's two pools on the ship. They're both smaller than the pool in my backyard, which is not big. I watched a guy with his kid. He just walked right onto the ship, took his shirt off, and then just in full jeans, just jumped in the pool. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I kind of get what this is going to be. Was he Latin American? No. Oh, wow. No, white dude, some tats. Yeah. Wow. So, so there's what I'd imagine it to be is you get on the boat, they hand you your parrot head, they give you a lay, they give you like flowers, sure. and the guy. Here's the thing. So the guy that's in the guy that's in the show, there was one guy that was actually in the national tour of the musical. Oh, so wow. I'm like, I'm in a mask, but I'm like, oh, I'm trying to be like secretive here. I don't want to like. So I have my sister go to him, and then I go to the other guy, and I got past him, but then I got greedy, and I wanted to send O'Malley a. a selfie of me and this guy say i'm hiding in plain sight so i take i go over real quick i go selfie and he does it i take a picture and i start walking away and i hear him go garcia <gasps> and i'm like oh no i just keep walking and he goes greg garcia and i turn around and i'm like no <laughs> and then like he's hurt he's like you don't remember me oh. and i go no i remember you but no i'm just uh I'm just, you know, I'm just here with my sister. I just was being located. I was going to send you the picture in a couple of days. I thought it'd be funny, blah, blah. He goes, oh, no, I won't say anything. You're going to see the show? And I'm like, oh, there's a show? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, so anyway. Um, but yeah, and it was... It was and how was that? It was a cookie. So you time. get a lay, and then get a lay. and then are there just is there a row of blenders? I imagine like the constant blenders moving, constant drink pushing. Yeah, you have to like buy your drink. Pa I've never been on a, a cruise drink before. Pass. I know you guys have been on cruises. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the first cruise I've ever been on, and I don't think it's necessarily the top echelon <laughs> of cruises. Like there's a lot of hidden costs, and mm. like they keep hitting you with different things. And I actually felt bad for some of the people. So I'm like, hey, is this this the surprise kind of costs and stuff but a lot of drinks pushing drinks and i would just keep telling like i they walk by and they like, drink and i'm like i'm a recovering alcoholic i'm like this is a terrible idea you know i would say to the people just to get them away i'm realizing this is not where i should have been <laughs> but they had aa meetings on the boat what each day my sister i think that's that every out. cruise oh it is okay. every oh, cruise. That's yeah. cool. right. i think almost every cruise offers that and some place to worship as well oh nice. wow yeah I didn't see that. Cool. They had a casino. They would teach you how to gamble because they wanted you to gamble. There was bingo. And we sweet. We, we bingo is actually a fucking rad time on a cruise ship. We That's had fun. a good time playing bingo, but like you had to pay 40 bucks to play. And oh. I, I think they collected from what I counted, maybe about a thousand bucks. And then the winner got two hundred dollars. And mm. I was like, this seems a little unfair. But um, the first five people that yelled bingo didn't have bingo. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so I'm like, guys, let's get it together here, man. Drunk, just drunk? No. Or just stupid? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 They just couldn't. They just, just couldn't. crackers. They couldn't yeah. figure it out. They couldn't figure it out. No, it's right here. And you're like, no, you got to have them. No, you yeah. got to. It's got to be connecting. Yeah. Now, do they play the song Margaritaville on the hour, every hour? Like, is, is there a time for Margaritaville? Yeah, there's no, there's not a specific. I mean, the, the time for the show is every night. And then they have like a little trio band that will play stuff and they'll mix in Buffett music and other like island music and stuff. Okay. And my sister's fun because whenever she sees somebody that's alone, because there was people, there was people alone, she just invites them over. She Aww. wants to talk to them. We, t we met this great woman, Verona, from the Bahamas, and she was just using it as her, she's like, I don't know who Jimmy Buffett is. She was just <laughs> using it as her transportation from Florida back to the Bahamas. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. So we had a good time. We had fun. Yeah, because I, I wonder, you wonder like, oh, does Jimmy Buffett have such a fan base that he can do this? But I guess it's irrelevant. Like Margarita Bill is just, it's an idea. It's a, it's a place in your mind. Yeah, it's and this ship was like, this is like a 30-year-old ship that's been going back and forth and doing this cruise for a while. So I think they <laughs> gotcha. just kind of rebranded it. And it was also gotcha. a Wednesday. So I'll give them the benefit of the doubt sure. that maybe they do better business on, on the weekend or something like that. Gosh. But it might have been my last cruise. <laughs> I think I got a taste of it. Okay. I'm good. 
full dose. Yeah, I got yeah. a full dose. I yeah. went went in head first, and, and yeah. I think I'm done. God, my parents love that shit so much. I mean, so much. You go like, don't you want to just like travel somewhere awesome and spend time there? No, just want to. You know, it's nice. It's all in one place. Yeah, my parents have been on a ton of them as well. You okay. know, um, I talked to this one guy recently when I told him I was on that, and he said that he went on this cruise. Have you heard of this ship, The World? Mm-mm. Where you buy a condominium on, on this the thing. ship? That's a great idea. It's. I looked it up afterwards, and he was like, "Oh, I got to go on the." Um, I was, at first, I was like, "Oh, I got to spend seven days with these people and blah blah." He said it was the craziest thing he's ever seen in his life, and I looked it up. It was called the World. Yeah, it's this thing, and you buy condominiums, um, and then you own it, and then you just hop on and off whenever you want. Oh my God, we should get this for Charo. Yeah, it's. Mm. You're gonna have to. Get her to do something really good to pay for this. How much is that? I it's I have no idea. It has to be millions of dollars. I have to, I gotta think it is. I mean, you own the condominium on the ship. That's crazy. Oh, uh, seven see? million. There you go. What? Yeah, and this guy I know was just a guest of somebody, but like he said, it was absolutely Make it bigger? insane. King but if calls. you're retired and oh, you, you can start at eight twenty five. But if you're retired and you just love cruising, you have to prove your net worth. Nice. What do you have? What you have to have a net worth of five million. Like so, they they make you prove that, then purchase. Wow, cost from eight hundred twenty-five thousand to seven point three million. Then add another ten percent. That's 10% a big spread. Like what? Like I wonder what the for annual is. maintenance fees and not, oh my god, but these are like super primo apartments, huh? Oh yeah, it's supposed to be amazing. So this thing just never stops cruising, and then you just. Get on when you want to get on. Hop on and off whenever you want, I guess. This was he he hopped on in France, I think. Yeah. Wow. That's such a cool thing. It's kind of a cool con I like the concept. Yeah. I've never heard the you know what I mean? Like of Oh yeah. It's making so, I mean, like awesome, if you have so much money yeah. that you can just do that and not even and you think don't have about to think it. about the which it's, line you just yeah, go like, Oh, it's this one. It's amazing. I have my place on there. But yeah. that's a that's that's a lot of money. That's, that's a, a lot, lot of money. Of yeah. And you have to like like you said, have a lot of money. Also, really love this to invest in that. Like you yeah. really got to love that. Yeah, but just to have like, I mean, just the luxury of just like walking into your own. Like it's already set up. Yeah, you just huge. like, oh, where's the ship? Yeah, let's go catch it. Yeah, it's yeah, nuts. that's so fun. But then you still have to deal with the buffet line, and mm, right, like I don't, know. I don't know if there's I don't a buffet about line on this. on this one. I'm not so sure. This you're getting drink coupons this isn't carnival. On, yeah. on this. No, I think you're. There's a line for the the water slide. Yeah, there's there isn't a guy in the pool in his jeans in this one. I don't think. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's the crazy part is like the disparity of. I would get it for my mom if like she that. promised to stay on. Just you never know? get so off. You have to stay on this <laughs> forever. How long? At at least three years. Yeah. And you know people die on those, like old people. It's got to be old people that just die. Yeah. It can and then happen. they just kick you right off into the ocean. It's easy peasy. Yeah. That is they the, have a shoot. Really yeah. open. <laughs> we really should start doing that, honestly. I mean, I mean, if you're talking about like what is projected for human living next, whatever, a few hundred or even a thousand years, it's like, look, this many billions of people have already lived and died and we keep burying them, taking up space. It's like... Let's start shoving them into the water. Yeah, and they'll know? give back to the ocean. To the ecosystem. Yeah. They'll eat it. Yeah. Things will eat it out there. Yeah. I like I'm this idea because I don't want to be buried. I feel like it's a waste of space. It is. And being burned, then they give you, the, the your family, the ashes. And like, now what the fuck do I do with this brick that was my mother? It's kind of an inconvenience. I wouldn't mind being fed to, to the wildlife. It's not bad. I would actually, to, to I, feed wouldn't, my body. I wouldn't mind it before I check out. Like a little... <laughs> Like as, as you go, like it's really gonna get painful now, and be like, "Fucking take Feed me, me to take sharks. me to the Shark Tank." Yeah, I uh, I told my wife I haven't put it in writing yet, but I told her I want her to prop me up like weekend and burning styles yeah. in in my AMC Pacer, my nineteen seventy six Pacer, and yeah. put it on a flatbed, yeah. and I want her to go across the country with it. Oh, that's cool. Aww, that's yeah, a good idea. I thought you were gonna say off a cliff. No, I oh. mean ultimately maybe yeah. off a cliff that'd be fine, but like yeah. a little parade. Yeah, oh, that's like a, a good little, idea. Yeah, I wouldn't mind doing me. no seat belt just into a wall, you know? Well, hold on now. I like what you're thinking. And because you're a celebrity, m- may I charge a, like a pay-per-view for this just as a fund? That'd be cool. That'd be good. Might kids. as well make a little money off of it. Like a YMH Live situation, yeah. but for people can watch your death. Sure. I'll be pretty cool, right? I'll be really pissed, though, if I don't die. If we, you know what I mean? I'm yeah, not I just, I mean, I'm sure you. the consumer would be too, but I'm saying... 
if I hit a wall at like 140 miles an hour and then they're like, mm, bad news. That's rough. That's yeah. the worst. I had a conversation with You're my gonna wife. You're going to need to order about, a bunch of straws. Go ahead. <laughs> I had a conversation with my wife about death not long ago because, well, this is a bummer, but that guy from the Foo Fighters, Taylor yeah. Hawkins, and he was a neighbor of ours. Mm. And, uh, and she was just like, oh my God, that poor woman right now, his wife, like she's over there. And like she said to me, she goes, I would have no idea what to do if you died, like you have to write down, like, I don't know where money is. I don't know. Like you have to write down everything I'm supposed to do if you die. So like she made me, gave me an assignment. So I wrote it. She hasn't seen it. But like, number one, I said, cry, you psychopath. Like, yeah, why, do, yeah. why do I have to like, yeah. why do I have to tell you this or whatever? And I had to go through and write this whole thing. But it's just Aww. full of jokes. Just, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, hey, cheer up. It's all right. You know, I'm trying to like talk her through it and everything. Here's the ATM code. Yeah. And at the end, yeah. I say, uh. Uh, P.S. If you believe in heaven and you ever want to see me again, you better start doing some bad shit. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> so hopefully it'll make her laugh. Yeah. yeah. You're not checking out soon, right? We'll see. Yeah. No, no. I hope not. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I hope not. I got a lot of uh, gin to play and yeah. hard candies yeah. to eat. Yeah, man. Well, yeah. and also, I mean, this is morbid as shit, but like worth mentioning, clean out your shit bef like when you're well. Like when you go through a dead people's stuff, you find crazy things. My mother's doing that now. She calls it Swedish death cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> She's dark as shit. My mother's dark as shit. She just talks about dying all the time. Yeah. Like all the time she talks about dying and she's cleaning stuff out and like I'll come and she's like, I threw out all your stuff. It's all gone. You know, I'm like, okay. I mean, I'd like to look at it, but okay. And, and every time I come to the house, it's just <laughs> less and less stuff that yeah. she's just... Yeah. Purging. I told her, I said at her funeral, I'm going to say it's a shame she couldn't be here today because she's been looking forward to this for the last 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> but she's super healthy, and but she's just like, yeah, this whole Swedish death cleaning concept. Swedish death cleaning. Yeah. I think, I think my mom's going to outlive everybody. I think she's so, too. Weird. She's got like, a lot of strength to her. She looks like... Like, I'm not saying your mother's a cockroach, but she's got <laughs> that kind of... No, Good you know, know. She has, and she has that thing, too, where, like, you know, those people who the, everyone is like, take better care of yourself, all this self maintenance stuff, and, you know, it's going to help. And then she's one of those anomalies where it's just like, I do no self care. And then you go for a physical, and she's going to be 78 soon. And she's like, Yeah, they were like, Wow, you, everything's That's so great. unfair to people, you know, isn't it? My father's so like unfair. that. I'll watch my father sit down and just eat seven <laughs> Krispy Kreme donuts. Yeah. And then, like, I'll go out to dinner with him, and he'll get a milkshake with his burger at the stand and then he gets up and i go what are you doing he goes i'm gonna get a milkshake for dessert i'm like you had a milkshake he goes did i i said yeah, yeah. He goes, oh, i'm gonna have another one it's unbelievable and he's yeah. like thin and healthy Crazy. as can be and then yeah it's well you've all, got good dna then yeah, it's a roll of the dice that's what i say to my wife she's like you gotta eat healthier you gotta, i'm like look at my father yeah i'm fine no, you don't your tote's fine i said yeah you need to eat healthier <laughs> it is a, it is a roll of dice it really is yeah you yeah i just don't know and look at us. We got huge dicks. That wasn't our choice, you know? No, the dick sitch is ridiculous, you know? Yeah. Just average, eight to 10 inches. And yeah. And yeah. I mean, that's I remember the, we that's showed the each other. Latin in, our, in us, yeah. I think. We showed each other at one of those uh, pitch meetings. We were like, look at this. And then it was right off the bat, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> you were like, what are you packing? And I'm yeah. like, here's what I'm packing. Yep. And yeah. Speaking you got to get to know each other. You got, I like it's to like dogs smelling like each to... other's asses. Exactly. It's, it's I want to know what I'm dealing with. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. Now, uh, I mean, you you listen to the show. Do you, how big is Henry Cavill's dick? What do you think his dick sitch is? <sighs> it's probably pretty good, right? I think so. You know, that's the thing I think about. Like all these guys that got canceled, like Harvey Weinstein, and all these guys that were just taking their dick out. I mean, whatever the situation, it's always different. Anything, but all I take away from it is like they got to have some pretty good dicks, right? To like yeah. just take them out all the time. I imagine. Like I've never thought like I'm going to use this as bait. Right. Like, like, yeah. You know, like, I'm going to, like, this is. Once people see this, if she sees the room's this, it's going to change. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Like, I'm more like three card Monty. Like, I'll hide it as long as I possibly yeah, can. Yeah, yeah. But, but it, that's what I think about, like, those guys. They must, they must have a pretty good situation going on. Or are you on. just ready to go? Right. I think you're just ready to go. 
You yeah, know what I mean? That could because be because that's too. the that's you could the just time be a you psychopath. F- also, yeah. you, you feel the most confident when you're ready to go, usually. Right? Or maybe it's so bad that you're like, let me just put this out here right now. You could have a humiliation because this could be thing. a deal breaker later. I'm gonna yeah. just throw this out here. Now you see, yeah. that I got nothing. It's you're built terrible. like Bobby Lee, and you just exactly. Go like, and here yeah. it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because he shows it all the time, right? And it's not good. No, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. So I guess there is a uh, there's a there's a flip side to there's that too. There's a flip too. side to it. Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. you've changed my mind on this topic. All right. <laughs> well, uh, I think that's why I came here today. Yeah. 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 I feel like that. That's the real reason. Yeah. Um, we all learned. Greg Garcia, his show Sprung comes out on Amazon Freebie uh, August 19th. Don't forget, you'll be able to see Uncle Joey Diaz, I believe, in the first two episodes. And, um, dude, it's always a fun hang. Thank oh, you for you're coming. The Thank best. you so much. This yeah. was awesome. It's good the seeing best. you guys. We love you. All right. What's up there, Chomo? Listen here. Money right now. Money, money right now. You're fired, bud. You Damn stupid film. fuck. Money right now. Money, money right now. You're fired, bud. You just fuck. ruined your life. Money right now. Money, money right now. You're fired, bud. <gasps> You're on fire. Money right now. Money, money right now. You know what? You're fired, okay? You didn't follow pro. This is America, you dumb son of a bitch. This is America, you Damn stupid film. fuck. What is this place? Baby raper on your face. Oh, touch my camera through the fence, you faggot. Peterson, gone all the motherfuckers. That's the way you do it. You feather in a color. Falcon car wash. Light yourself on fire. Let your feather in this shit. <laughs> Let your brain on fire. Fucking asshole. Look at that fucking thing. Yeah. Look at that fucking pink eye drink. Isn't that felt great? He didn't fall proto, buddy. Buddy. Buddy, you're done. Money right now, money, money right now. You're fired, bud. You stupid fuck. Money right now, money, money right now. You're fired, bud. You just ruined your life. Money right now, money, money right now. You're fired, bud. (gasps) You're on fire. Money right now, money, money right now. You know what? You're fired, okay? You didn't follow pro. Ta ta there, retard. Did you like that full episode of your mom's house? Are your jeans as high and tight as it can be? I doubt it. Watch some more clips, dude. Look at that one. Watch that one right here. Or maybe here. Maybe here. Maybe <laughs> Maybe you should subscribe. That way, every time a new video gets posted, you'll be notified. Stay in the know, jeans. Subscribe now.